Did you know those $400 shoes you splurged on might actually cost you $800 by the time you pay off your credit card? Oh, and also, by the time you pay them off, they're totally out of style. Save money and your sanity. Apply for a low interest rate credit card from Westcom. Westcom is member owned, so we offer great rates you won't find at a bank. Check them out at westcom.org. Westcom credit card disclosures and terms and conditions apply. Blog Talk Radio. This is True Capitalist Radio. True Capitalist Radio. I am your host, the man they call Ghost. The badass of business. Give him capitalism or give him death. That's it. Period. Broadcasting from his Skyline Office Studios in beautiful downtown Austin, Texas. You sound fruitier than a box of Fruit Loops, for Christ's sake. And now, he'll take it from here. Your host, the prognosticator of prognosticators... The man they call Ghost. <laughs> What's going on, folks? And thank you for tuning in with me to another edition of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast. And, of course, I am your host, the man they call Ghost. And once again, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. This is episode number 309, number 309 for all the folks that are keeping track of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast. And before we get into anything else, I'd like for everybody to please spread it around like wildfire. That True Capitalist Radio is in effect and in the house, and we are live every Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time at blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. That's blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. And if you haven't already done so, folks, please follow me on Twitter. The Twitter name to follow is Politics Ghost. All one word, no underscores, baby. Politics Ghost is the name to follow. Now, folks, uh, it is one hell of a Taco Tuesday, a lot of news to get to, for Christ's sake. Uh, First and foremost, I want to talk about what the capitalist army and those on the Trump train have been doing to Black Lives Matter. We are trying to spawn the debate that Black Lives Matter is an LGBT organization, and we are starting to penetrate that psyche of the Black Lives Matter folk, and they're starting to recognize that... D-Ray and the rest of the so-called leadership apparatus of Black Lives Matter has more of a gay agenda as as opposed to a racial agenda. And I have been saying this time and time again to anybody who's a Black Lives Matter supporter that D-Ray, the supposed leader of Black Lives Matter, is a gay man first, a black man second. And if you don't believe me, I have tweeted countless articles in which D-Ray is interviewed by LGBT-based magazines, where he gave speeches in front of LGBT-based groups. I'm telling you this right now. This is a reason why D-Ray is heading the Black Lives Matter and whatever black folks is following this fictitious movement into a realm of self-destruction. And I just want to thank everybody who is trying to help the capitalist army in the effort of plaster it in the face of all these Black Lives Matter supporters, that Black Lives Matter movement is not about racial equality. It has nothing to do with making black lives better. It has everything to do with basically leading black folks into a road of self-destruction. And we talked about this yesterday. I'm not going to get too far into it because there's a lot of news to talk about today. But I say this, and I'm going to say it again. I believe, in my personal opinion, that D-Ray has HIV, AIDS, in my personal opinion, because he is a self-proclaimed HIV, AIDS advocate. And, folks, how many people do you know that are HIV-AIDS advocates that don't have the goddamn AIDS. 
I mean, somebody explain that to me. And folks, we have been trying to relay the message that D-Ray, all right, has compared Black Lives Matter to the fight against HIV AIDS. And that is on record. That's on the internet. You can find that crap. I posted it on my Twitter account, Politics Ghost. You can look back down on the timeline to see if you can try to find it. This man has compared Black Lives Matter with the fight against HIV AIDS. I mean, if you're a black person, if you're part of the black community, how does that make you feel? How does that make you feel that this supposed leader of Black Lives Matter is comparing your strife, comparing your struggle with that of the fight against HIV AIDS? I don't see the correlation, folks. I don't see the correlation of taking bad meat in the can and you all of a sudden get the AIDS and a person being black. I don't understand the correlation there, but you see, this is the fundamental basis of Black Lives Matter. And if you don't believe me, just take a look at when D-Ray got arrested in Baton Rouge. Take a look at all the Black Lives Matter supporters that were trending, all these ridiculous trends on Twitter, for Christ's sake. I'm telling you this right now. The majority of Black Lives Matter do not know that D-Ray is a power-bottom homosexual. A lot of the Black Lives Matter people do not know that this man could potentially be, in my opinion, HIV AIDS positive. And why is that important, folks? Because it, it basically tells the motive of why D-Ray is leading his black community down a road of self-destruction. Because this man, if he happens to have HIV AIDS, he's already dead inside. I, I think that he's got a bone to pick. I think this could potentially be some kind of vengeance against black people, against white people. I don't know. But I'm telling you this right now. No one, I have met no one that is an HIV AIDS advocate that does not have the AIDS. And look, that throws a whole other connotation on the leadership of D-Ray. And I think Black Lives Matter needs to acknowledge this crap. And they need to plaster it in their face, for Christ's sake. I'm not joking. That's why I even tweeted at Alex Jones' organization, InfoWars, in an attempt to have them relay the message that Black Lives Matter is an LGBT organization. Because, folks, once the majority of Black Lives Matter realizes this, they will no longer be violent in the name of Black Lives Matter if they know that if they lay their lives on the line, if they lay their freedom on the line, they are doing it for an LGBT movement. I'm telling you this right now, the majority of black folk are not down with LGBT. Whether right or wrong, whether right or wrong, they are not down with LGBT. And I think that we, as the capitalist army, we as the Trump trade, we need a focus and emphasis on making sure that we amplify this information to every Black Lives Matter supporter on the Internet and throughout the freaking community out here. That they are being led around by the nose by somebody who is not racially motivated, who could care less about progressing the black race, who could care less about educating the black race, even though D-Ray is a bureaucrat in the educational system. This man is doing nothing but agitating in an attempt to get an undereducated community. Because, folks, let's be honest, all right? Those that are partaking in the Black Lives Matter havoc across the country are undereducated. And they are being manipulated by these folks that are supposedly educated in uh, D-Ray, in uh, NETA, and, uh, you know, all these other folks. And they are hijacking the undereducated population of Black Lives Matter and utilizing it to infuriate violence across the country and why this domestic terrorist organization continues to rain havoc is because it is being backed up by Obama. It's being backed up by the Department of Justice. I mean, did you all see, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit, Loretta Lynch's testimony and every one of the Democrats that were questioning Loretta Lynch, were promoting Black Lives Matter, a domestic terrorist organization that is conducting terrorism on America today. These are elected officials in the Democrats that are promoting Black Lives Matter. They're promoting this garbage. Unfreaking believable. Unbelievable. But you see this, folks, not only 
did the Democrats in the Loretta, Loretta Lynch hearing promote Black Lives Matter? So did this disgusting, treasonous president when he was lecturing the cops at the Dallas Memorial, and we'll get to that in a second. But by God, before I move on to the next subject, please, please, if you're a troll, if you're somebody that is bored for Christ's sake, I mean, go to any one of these Black Lives Matter trends, all right, and go right at these people and tell them that they are backing up an LGBT-based movement. This has nothing to do with race relations. This has nothing to do with the progression of black folk. This has nothing to do with the education of black folk. This has nothing to do with the economic progress of black folk. Why do you think, D-Ray, instead of educating his own people to violence and sending them down a road to self-destruction, why won't D-Ray, a bureaucratic educator, educate his people? Why doesn't he educate his people and enlighten them on how to confront the police through legalese and through uh, a different approach other than this rap, hip-hop, ghetto-fied degeneracy that has been embraced by many within the black culture. I mean, folks, all you have to do is look at these world star hip-hops. You know, all you got to do is go uh, YouTube and go put on world star hip-hop or H, uh, WH or WS. S-H, whatever the case might be, and take a look. A lot of these little world star hip-hop clips that are Vine-related, they like to confront police. I don't know if you've seen this, folks. They have little camera phones. They're talking garbage to police. Uh, I've, I've seen some uh, Vines. I've seen some uh, uh, world star hip-hop clips in which they're being chased by police, and they think it's funny. I've seen some world star hip-hop uh, uh, clips in which uh, these uh, – Urban community-based folk are out here smoking blunts in front of the damn cops, talking garbage. I've seen it all. I mean, all you got to do is look at it. They promote it on World Star Hip Hop. They promote the degeneracy. They promote the harassment against the cops. I'm telling you this right now. If D-Ray was to educate the Black Lives Matter community into explaining themselves to the police in legalese fashion, there's nothing more that scares the police than somebody who understands the laws of their municipality. And once you start uh, telling the police the laws of your municipality, all of a sudden they're going to be a little apprehensive to uh, implement any kind of forceful uh, force or any kind of uh, uh, physical force against your person. But when you start acting defensive and start cursing, you're already getting on to a bad start. And you see, folks, I'm not trying to say that's a justification to being thrown to the ground, but don't expect a positive reaction from the police if you're going to confront them with the uh, you know vernacular that encompasses the hip-hop rap community, uh, four-letter words, and, uh, you know, uh, disrespect, that sort of thing. And you see, why doesn't D-Ray teach his people how to do that? No, he's teaching them how to kill cops. He's telling them to go out there and commit violence. He's out here promoting this terrorism. I'm telling you, he's promoting this terrorism. And he's doing so because he knows that he can manipulate an undereducated populace because he thinks that he is the smart gay power bottom bureaucrat i'm serious that's what he actually thinks have you ever seen this scumbag interviewed this idiot thinks that he is smarter than everybody else typical liberal typical liberal garbage for christ's sake trying to lecture everybody like he knows better hey uh d-ray if you took bad meat in the can and you got the hiv aids who are you to lecture anybody to be honest with you i'm just saying i'm just saying i mean that was a bad mistake if you happen to have the aids there d-ray who are you to be lecturing anybody on any kind of a soapbox, with all due respect? All right, You couldn't even be responsible as it relates if you do have AIDS, because I believe you do. Uh, no one is an HIV-AIDS advocate that doesn't have the disease. All right, I'm sorry. I think that I've, I've never met no one who is an HIV-AIDS advocate that was not afflicted with the disease itself. All right? But... You got the AIDS because you were irresponsible sexually, for Christ's sake, all right? You obviously didn't enlighten yourself or didn't want to comprehend what sex education was teaching you there, D-Ray, and you decided to go bareback uh, up your poop chute, and, uh, you know, within a three- or four-month period, you got the AIDS. 
So who are you, with all due respect there, D-Ray, D-Ray how, I mean, who are you to lecture anybody? All right? Jesus Christ. Anyway, I'm going to move on to the next subject matter. I'm just, please, folks, if you're a part of the capitalist army, if you're a part of the Trump train, you're bored, you want to troll somebody, I mean, troll these Black Lives Matter supporters and tell them that they are a part of an LGBT organization, an LGBT movement, and their leaders are all blatant, open homosexuals. I mean, D-Ray, all you got to do is say, look, this man D-Ray compared Black Lives Matter the black strife to the fight against HIV AIDS. If you tell that to most Black Lives Matter folks, they will throw up. They would puke for Christ's sake, all right? I'm not kidding around. I mean, we have to put this as a point of emphasis. This needs to be a major piece of propaganda. We got to make sure that each and every one of these violent thugs that are being led around by power bottom D-Ray know that this man compared black strife, compared Black Lives Matter to the fight against HIV AIDS, all right? And I cannot believe that the black folk are actually accepting this and not comprehending in their head that there is a bigger agenda than their racial hysteria that is being riled up by D-Rate. This is an LGBT agenda. I mean, I even saw some people at, I forgot which one of these goddamn marches and protests of Black Lives Matter, holding up signs saying black is the new gay, or gay is the new black, for Christ's sake. All right? Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm just, I'm sick of this. Let me move on to something else. we got all kinds of stuff to talk about today. I want to talk a little bit about this disgusting, filthy testimony of Loretta Lynch, for Christ's sake. How this woman can keep her job after this testimony is beyond me. I mean, seriously, what a disgusting, despicable, soulless bureaucrat, for Christ's sake, man. And you can tell, no matter what kind of bureaucratic poker face that this disgusting fat slob was trying to, you know, uh, portray herself in front of the House Judiciary Committee... Uh, there was a few times where she was a little bit shook, to say the least. You could see that disgusting bureaucratic mug change shape when she found herself in a little bit of a pickle during some of this Republican testimony, or the Republican questioning, excuse me. But what made me sick about this goddamn hearing was the Democrat side. I mean, what a bunch of crap. Every time a Democrat was questioning Loretta Lynch, Black Lives Matter. Oh, this is an epidemic. The police are killing black people. Oh, my God. Folks, this is not an epidemic. This is not something where hundreds of thousands of black people are being killed at the hands of cops. All right? Last year, in 2015, only 258 black folk were killed at, behind the gun of a police officer. 258. Folks, right now, as we speak, in 2016, there are over 500 black deaths in Chicago, Illinois, right now. Right now, in 2016, there's over 500 black deaths at the gun of another black person. So where's the outrage in that? Oh, that's right. Rahm Emanuel is the mayor of Chicago, Rahm Emanuel was the chief of staff during Obama's first tenure in 2008. So that's why the Democrats don't want to talk about Chirac. That's what they call Chicago. Now, they call it Chirac because it's so goddamn dangerous out there. And lest we forget, Chicago has one of the most strictest gun laws in the nation. So that should show all you stupid gun control lunatics that you take away the guns from the law-abiding citizens, the only people that have the guns are the outlaws. Do you understand that? Are the criminals, all right? Are the killers, are the murderers. And Chicago's murder statistics are a factual proof of that. I couldn't believe these Democrats during the Loretta Lynch testimony, using this as an opportunity to pander and, and fuel the flames of Black Lives Matter 
hysteria, havoc, violence. Each and every one of those Democrats that were questioning Loretta Lynch in that House Judiciary Committee should all be removed from their position for promoting a domestic terrorist organization in Black Lives Matter. How many more of these episodes of violence related to Black Lives Matter have to happen before we start recognizing that this is a domestic terrorist organization and the American citizens should start treating it as such? I'm not joking. I could not believe this garbage. All right, Now, as the Republicans were concerned, they were trying to pry out any kind of response from Loretta Lynch, and yet she was just bureaucratically spitting back the same crap over and over and over again. And this is supposed to be the top cop. This is supposed to be the Department of Justice Attorney General, and she couldn't even ask answer simple questions. I remember there was uh, one Republican congressman that asked her, look, I-, I don't get what you're coming from. Let me ask you this question, all right? If I was going 65 in a 55, do I deserve a ticket? And her response in bureaucratic fashion, well, that depends on the state. That depends on the municipality. I mean, give me a break, man. This is supposed to be the attorney general. She, she doesn't even know the law. This woman should be removed. She should either resign, she should no longer be the Attorney General after this testimony. I'm serious. I mean, can't, I mean, who else can't see this? Who else can't see this? Good God, man. I mean, James Comey was more explicit in his testimony, and this man is the head of the FBI. Here you've got Loretta Lynch, who's supposed to be the top cop, who's supposed to know every federal and state legal statute in the book. It looks like she's spending more time shoveling bonbons down her fat ass than she is worrying about understanding the legal the legalities of pursuing cases. I mean, seriously, this bitch is a barrel-ass fat bitch, man. I'm sorry. I- I'm-, I'm sorry. I mean, if you're going to be a fatty, you need to go above and beyond, uh, you know, the call of duty as far as I'm concerned. Because, I mean, when I see a fat, barrel-ass broad like that, I think to myself, look at this broad. She's not. She's- she doesn't know shit. Excuse my friend. She doesn't know a goddamn thing. She's more worried about feeding her fat ass than she is worried about her actual job, about her actual responsibilities, about her actual goddamn intention of doing her goddamn occupation. This woman should be removed. She should resign, for Christ's sake. This was complete incompetence. But no, she's a woman, right? She's a fatty woman. We got to give her the benefit of the doubt, right? Give me a freaking break. It makes me sick, man. It makes me sick that this fat, disgusting, plumpy piece of fluffy crap can sit here and get away with four or five hours of non-testimony, of spitting back nothing but non-answers, and this is supposed to be the top cop, the Attorney General of America. I mean, what an utter disgrace. What an utter disgrace. I mean, give me the mic. Give me the mic. Let me tell you something. I think Loretta Lynch is a disgrace to liberals. And and look, it's not hard to disgrace those pieces of garbage. She's a disgrace to black folk, all right? She's a disgrace to fat women. She's a disgrace to her goddamn self. I mean... How can anyone respect this piece of fat bureaucratic crap after this non-testimony she gave for four goddamn hours? It's utterly pathetic. Jesus Christ, man. I can't believe it. Let me tell you, I have have a headache. I have a headache from all the disgusting garbage the left has been trying to shove down our holes throughout this whole morning and afternoon, for Christ's sake, man. All right? It makes me sick. This summer, zero in on a new Nissan and zero in on big savings. Now with bonus cash on select models on top of existing offers, now's the best time to get a great offer. Get to your local Nissan store and shop choose Nissan.com today. Hurry, bonus cash ends soon. She 
he didn't answer a single question, for Christ's sake, man. I mean, not even on the Democrat side when they were, you know, asking her about garbage that had nothing to do with the actual testimony of Loretta Lynch. She couldn't even answer those questions. I mean, give me a break, man. She needs to be removed. And not only that, she did not want to answer the question on whether or not she would be open if Hillary Clinton asked her to retain her services as the Attorney General. Because you see, if she was to say, look, uh, this is my last term, I have no intention of uh, being the Attorney General after my term, then that would have thrown a whole other twist on it, meaning that her incompetence or deliberate attempt at evading the actual truth didn't have any kind of political kickbacks, to say the least. She couldn't even say that. She could not even say that, for Christ's sake, and it makes me sick to my stomach. I I, I literally want to puke up nasty chicken grease and corn oil and cream of wheat with sauerkraut. Ah, just disgusted. I mean, I just, I can't believe that this is America, all right? I can't believe that this is the top cop. And I was hoping, I was hoping that one of these congressmen would have questioned Loretta Lynch about the D-Ray connection. Yeah. Y'all remember the D-Ray hack private messages out of his Twitter account where he boasts about having a personal, uh, excuse me, a personal communication with Loretta Lynch with the Department of Justice? How come nobody asked her about that? She probably would have given a non-evasive, ridiculous answer. Just a a non-answer is what she would have given. I mean, Jesus Christ! This woman should be removed, as far as I'm concerned. This was the biggest slap in the face, all right? This is a biggest slap in the face. I cannot believe, I just can't believe this is a slap in the face to America, all right? All right, this this is a slap in the face to America, and I can't stand it. That's why I got a headache. As a matter of fact, I got a drink here because you know I, got, I mean I got a headache for Christ's sake, man. I need a drink. Give me my drink, Jesus Christ. Ugh. But this is our new America, isn't it? Where the rule of law means nothing anymore, huh? The rule of law means nothing anymore, even to the Attorney General. Can you believe that? The rule of law means diddly. Thanks, Obama. Thanks a lot, you piece of trash. Anyway, I want to move on to another subject matter, because just thinking about that non-testimony by Loretta Lynch makes me want to puke, all right? Jesus Christ, that smug little goddamn face that she had on her fat little plumpy puss. I mean, Jesus Christ. I mean, I, I wish one of those congressmen, even if it would have risked their freedom, would have gotten up out of their seat and gave that bitch an Ike Turner bitch slap from here to goddamn nut bush. Jesus Christ. Anyway, folks, let me move on to another subject matter, all right? Hey, guess what? Feel the burn in your crotch, assholes. Bernie Sanders endorses Hillary Clinton. (laughs) Ha, 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 ha. The prognosticator of prognosticators strikes again. (laughs) I've been saying this since March of this year, folks, that Bernie Sanders is not serious about this particular presidential campaign, and all he is doing is utilizing all this rhetoric so that all you feel-the-burn ass-cracks can continue to contribute to his feel-the-burn campaign contribution account. All right? I mean, just to think, you have funded this old prostate-infected 75-year-old fraud's retirement fund. And I've said it, and I'll say it time and time again. When politicians retire from public office, they can legally take every red cent that's in their campaign contribution accounts and deposit it in their personal bank account tax-free. Do you understand that? And that's exactly what Bernie Sanders did to each and every one of you. Feel the burn ass cracks, all right? I'm telling you this right now. He did the classic liberal thing. He told you what you wanted to hear. You believed him. You followed him. You donated to his campaign. And as a result, he was bamboozling you idiots all along. And I've said it. 
Jill Stein from the Green Party offered Bernie Sanders to take the presidential ticket for the Green Party. She was willing to step down for, as vice presidential candidate. And I said Bernie wasn't going to do that, boy. <laughs> I mean, if he was really for the supposed revolution that he started, if he was really for the feel the burn supporters that supported him to high hell, then he would have taken that particular opportunity with the Green Party and continued to run with it, boy. He could have, could, but he ain't going to do it. You want to know why? That would take all the money that he has gotten in his campaign contribution account, and he doesn't want to spend those shekels, all right? I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. He don't want to spend those shekels, baby. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. And let me tell you something else. Did you see him when he made his speech in the beginning of his speech? Yeah, he was rubbing it in the faces of all you feel the burn ass cracks. Hey, thank you. Thank you for donating to the campaign of Bernie Sanders. Now I want all of you that have donated to my campaign, I want you now to go vote for Hillary Clinton. She is Mrs. Wall Street. She donated to my campaign too. So that's why I'm doing this. So I know you people are disappointed. And I know I should have uh, gone to the Green Party, but I'm not going to. I don't want to spend my shekels. So all I've got to say to you people that supported me, come on over here, take your underwears off. Oh, yeah, that's what i got to say to all of you feel the burn. You feel the burn now? huh? Oh, yeah, take your underwears off. Come here, let me let you feel this burn here. You want to feel the burn? Huh? You want to feel the burn? I got the burn. Oh, yeah, feel that boy right there. That's right. It's Uncle Bernie. That's right. I took you for everything. I took you for everything. Come on over here. Take your underwears off. That's right. Hey, come on over here. Take your underwears off. That's right. I ripped you off, but don't worry. I'm Uncle Bernie. I'm Uncle Bernie. You know you love Uncle Bernie over here. You know you love me. I told you I'd give you free college, and I lied. I told you I'd give you free health care, and I lied. And I told you that Hillary Clinton was not eligible, nor could she ever really be a president. She's incompetent. I told you. And what are you doing? You're doing nothing. You listen to me, and now I'm going to force you to vote for Hillary Clinton. So come on over here. Take your underwears off. Come on. Come on over here. You know you like it. You, oh, oh, oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's Uncle Bernie. It's Uncle Bernie. Oh, you heard Uncle Bernie. Oh, my God, you heard Uncle Bernie. Oh, oh, you heard Uncle Bernie. But vote for Hillary Clinton because you're an asshole. Oh, oh, Bernie. <laughs> oh, my God, that's exactly what Bernie Sanders did to each and every one of you feel the burn ass cracks. Uh, how does it feel, baby? How does it feel? To feel the burn right up your ass crack, now you learn. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm giddy about this crap, all right? I'm giddy. I am so, I mean, I, aside from the Loretta Lynch thing, I was looking through the Bernie Sanders trends and I was seeing all the discord, all the distress, uh, and all the confusion, all the hatred, you know, uh, between the Bernie Sanders camp. You had, uh, a lot of them saying, I don't care, Bernie. I'm not voting for Hillary Clinton, Mrs. Wall Street, you sellout bastard. And then you had others saying, oh, I can't believe that you won't vote for Bernie. Uh, you won't vote for Hillary. Uh, what, are you going to vote for Trump? Yeah, they're going to vote for Trump, all right? Because Trump understands trade. Trump understands what's going on out here. He is not corrupt. He is an anti-establishment candidate. He's the only anti-establishment candidate on the bill right now. I mean, give me a break, man. I'm telling you, each and every one of you Bernie Sanders people, I hope that you take this, and I hope it hurts you. I hope that you feel the burn right up your ass, and I hope that you learn as you feel this burn, because you are burn victims. You understand that? You are burn victims. And what you need to do to recuperate yourself is to vote for Donald Trump, the only anti-establishment candidate. What are you going to do? You're going to listen to Uncle Bernie 
and vote for Mrs. Wall Street, for Christ's sake? I mean, take a look at her campaign contributions, man. This broad is Mrs. Wall Street, man. Jesus Christ, man. I'm not joking. And you're going to sit here and you're going to continue to vote for this piece of trash? I mean, give me a break. I'm serious. I was so elated because I said this, folks, back in March, man. Look back in the archive. Blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. I told you Bernie was going to backstab the feel the burn crowd. I told you that he was a Democratic establishment hack. I told you, folks. I told you. <laughs> Woo! Oh, my God. I'm telling you this right now. That's one good piece of news today. All right? Now, what we should be calling the Bernie Sanders supporters now is burn victims. And uh, that's Mimi is just tweeting me right now. It's a very good hashtag. Burn victims for Trump. Right there. That's right. Burn victims for Trump. Because he's the only anti-establishment candidate. All right? And if you're going to still listen to Bernie Sanders and vote for Hillary Clinton, then your whole campaign, the past six to seven, eight months that you've been supporting Bernie Sanders was an absolute lie and you're a hypocrite. And is that what you want, people, that you were pushing this Bernie Sanders crap to think of you as an unadulterated hypocrite? Because that's the kind of position that Bernie Sanders has put you in right now. He's put all of you Bernie Sanders fans into a hypocritical corner, and you're either going to have to stay and be a damn hypocrite or say, hell no, I'm not doing this, Bernie, you dumb piece of garbage. All right? Jesus Christ. Anyway, folks, once again, lots of freaking news out here. All right? Bernie Sanders officially endorses Hillary Rotten Clinton. Huh? Do you feel the burn, burn victims? Huh? Do you feel the burn? <laughs> Woo! Oh, my God. I'm telling you, I'm giddy about that. All right? Because I knew that was going to happen. And all these feel the burn people said, no, ghost. You're wrong. Bernie's for real. And and you don't know nothing, ghost. Uh, uh, he's the revolution, ghost. <laughs> Shut up. You people that were sitting here supporting him, you're eating crow now, huh, boy? Huh? You're eating crow, huh? Well, eat it! Eat it! Eat it! Eat it and like it. Because that's what the Democrats, that's what the liberals do on a consistent goddamn basis. Do you understand that? On a consistent goddamn basis. <laughs> Woo! Anyway, folks, you know what I'm going to do right now? Since we've gone through, uh, you know, about three different pieces of uh, uh, major news right now, I feel like I'm going to do some Twitter shout-outs so that we can get some more folks uh, listening to the broadcast. Because let me tell you something right now. We need more people to listen. We need more people to understand the truth. Because if they'd have been listening, especially these feel-the-burn ass-cracks, they would have known that Bernie Sanders was going to betray them. If they would have listened to this broadcast, they would have known what was about to transpire. They would have known that Hillary Clinton wasn't going to get uh, prosecuted. They would have known all this stuff. So, by God, let's go ahead and let's do some Twitter shout-outs right now. For you folks that are unaware of what Twitter shout-outs are, all you've got to do is retweet the first tweet on my Twitter account, and, of course, the Twitter account is Politics Ghost. All one word, no underscores, Politics Ghost is the name. And I'd like for you to retweet True Capitalist Radio Now Live, baby. All right, True Capitalist Radio Now Live. You want a shout-out live right here on the broadcast, all right? So, hey, uh, Engineer, do we have any Twitter shout-outs to be had out here, Engineer? <laughs> All right, well, we got some Twitter shout-outs, and let's get to them right now. <laughs> Woo! Anyway, who we got here? Uh, we've got uh, Sergeant Yoda in the house, Teutonic Plague in the place. Uh, who else do we got here? we got uh, Securing Capital. What's going on? Uh, we've got Jigger in the house. We've got the Brony Network in the place. Uh, we've got the Happy Merchant, the Southern Rebel in the house. Once again, you want a shout-out, just retweet the first tweet on my Twitter account. 
Uh, we've got Gurmit the Gay Frog. Oh, there's that stupid bastard. we got the Green Leader in, in the house. Uh, who else do we got here? we got True Advertise Radio. What the hell does that mean, for Christ's sake? Jesus Christ. They replaced Ghost. Here we go again with this crap, for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ. Who else do we got here? we got Private uh, Fred Helm Winter. What's going on? Uh, we got Toad Puncher. Uh, we got the Smiler in the house. Uh, we got somebody named Bernie Sanders. I don't know why you're continuously promoting this bastard. He just slapped you in the face with uh, complete demoralization. We got Redemption 47 in the place. We got Dirk Pitt, Tamp, uh, Tank Dempsey in the house. Burn victim Abbott. Oh, you son of a. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? Damn it. That's my governor. That's my governor, you sack of crap. Don't you dare. Don't you even dare, boy. Don't you even dare besmirch Greg Abbott. I'm telling you this right now. I personally believe that this man was intimidated uh, when he was in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, on vacation. Because let me tell you something. How could this man get the type of burns that he... I, you know what? I'm not even going to go there. Just forget it. Give me a mic. Give me a mic. Give me the goddamn mic. Forget about it. Don't go there again, boy. That's my governor. Anyway, we got Trump and capitalists in the place. What's going on? Uh, we got CDI fan uh, 237. Check Christmas. Oh, come on. Check Christmas. Come on. Enough of Christmas. We got Tor's ear in the place. Here we go. Merry Christmas, ghost. Yeah, real funny, jerk dick. We got Veta Forum Wars in the place. Uh, we've got uh, Ghost the Grinch. Uh, you son of a bitch. Shut up. All right? I just don't like Christmas. That's all. All right? We got Novelty Best. Pra Platinum Robo in the house. Remington in the place. What's going on? All right. We're going to take a few more Twitter shout outs because I have a feeling that we're going to start hearing some disgusting, filthy, pathetic, troll terrorist like uh, Twitter shout outs here. Who the hell else do we got here? We got the mini trans can. There we go. A pair of balls on a, tr on a can, for Christ's sake. That's just great. Uh, we've got napalm burn for ghost. Now, I'm not burned, baby. You understand what I'm saying? I am elated that each and every one of these feel the burn ass cracks are burn victims, baby. They are burn victims. <laughs> we got Hans Gubbensmits in the, in the house here. Group poop dynamics. Give me a freaking break. Uh, we've got Greg Abbott barbecue. Look, asshole. All right, I'm, I'm warning you. I'm warning you, ass cracks. Do not make fun of my governor, boy. All right. We got capitalist UK. No gifts for ghosts. Yeah, real funny ass crack. I'm, I mean, look, that's, I'm telling you, that's why I don't like Christmas. You understand that? I haven't had a goddamn uh, Christmas present by anybody in over twenty something goddamn years. And what, I'm supposed to just love Christmas all of a sudden? Yeah, shove it up your ass, all right? Jesus Christ. We got Ronald McDonald Trump. Yeah, shove it up your ass, too. We got the married bachelor. Juno probe at Jupiter. Yeah, if you want to believe that. Hot wheels in Texas. Shove it up your ass, man, all right? Uh, we got the whore master. There's the whore. Oh, yes, I am the whore master. Jesus Christ, there's blood fart. We got Mega Coalition, the MAGA Coalition, excuse me. Uh, we've got uh, uh, Shekelstein Noseberg. All right, that's that's horrible, all right? That's horrible. Uh, we got Deep Fried Abbott. Ah, oh, you son of a. Damn it! Deep. I told you! I told you! I told you, sacks of crap! Enough! All right, do not make fun of my. I'm only going to take a couple of more Twitter shout-outs, and that's it, all right? Jesus Christ. We got Claudette uh, Melenenson. What's going on? I'm sorry if I butchered up your name. I'm only going to take a couple of more of these, and that's it, because these damn trolls are starting to piss me off, to say the goddamn least, and I'm pissed off already after all the trash that I saw today from Loretta Lynch, from Bernie Sanders, and goddamn Hillary Rotten Clinton. From Obama, which we're going to talk after Twitter shout-outs. I mean, what a disgrace that man. Jesus.
Jesus Christ. Who the hell else do we got here? We got uh, clown car uterus, whatever the hell that's supposed to mean. We got the disco waffle. Uh, we've got uh, the transformer. Yeah, real funny ass cracker. Right? Zim Tower in the house. Uh, anime capitalist asshole, really? Uh, hey, I mean, you stupid scumbag. We got Godzilla in the house. Uh, who else? We got Boat in the house. What's going on to Boat? Uh, we got Flaming Nipple Chops. What's going on? Uh, Charlie the Panda, Buttered Ghostler. Hey, look, enough of the butter jokes, all right? It's not the butter, all right, asshole? All right, I always say that a stick of butter a day keeps the doctor away, and that's all I'm going to say about that. That's my opinion. Shove it up your ass if you don't believe me, boy, all right? All right, who else do we got going on over here? We got equal rights for engineer. Hey, asshole, what are you talking about? Engineer gets paid, man. He's my employee. Equal rights for engineer. Look, don't listen to these people, engineer. These people are not your friends. These are Internet people. They're disgusting. They don't have any friends. They're trolls. They don't care less. Do you understand me? I'm serious. They don't care about you. Jesus Christ. We got party boner. Oh, my God. We got D-Ray Power Top Trump. Yeah, real funny ass cracker, right? Hey, asshole, uh, D-Ray is a bottom. You understand that? I mean, you can just tell by the feminine vernacular out of this fruit bowl, all right? No offense to fruit bowls. Anyway, we've got the rag man in the house. Uh, we've got the Ebenezer Ghostler. Oh, you son of a bitch. Shut up. Just shut your stupid, stinking face. We got based Loller in the house. All right, I'm only going to take a couple more of these, and then I'm going to move on to the next subject matter at hand here, folks, all right? And then I'm going to get to some of your calls, because I am curious to hear what many people have to say after this disgusting disgrace of liberal propaganda that's been shoved every different direction today on the boob tube and the mainstream, lamestream media, for Christ's sake, all right? Anyway, we got Exara Hawks in the house. What's going on, Exara Hawks? Uh, we got, uh, who else do we got? We got Ghost Has a Lisp. I don't have a lisp, you idiot. If I had a lisp, I wouldn't be able to roll my R's. Arriba! Arriba! <laughs> Has a lisp. I got your lisp right here. Your mother has got my lisp. Huh? Yeah, your mother's got my lisp right here on my sack, you fruit bowl. No, I'm sorry. Look, I'm sorry for that, folks. I'm, I'm getting juvenile thanks to these goddamn trolls out here, right? You see what you trolls are making me do? All right. Well, a couple of more and we're out of here. All right? That's about enough of this crap, all right? All right. We got Southern Secession now. Well, I don't know about the Southern Secession, but I know that Texas will be next on the agenda if Hillary Rotten Clinton is somehow elected goddamn president. I'll tell you that right goddamn now. What's going on to the summer of digital chaos? What's going on, man? Uh, who else do we got going on over here? We got sex with a star butterfly what the hell is that supposed to mean what the hell is that supposed to mean run engineer run all right that's enough just, just get it out of here leave the engineer alone assholes he's got a job to do let him do it all right that's it that's enough all right that's enough no more twitter shout outs you see this is why we cannot have nice things in the world today because we've got all these jerk dicks that are going to go and try to ruin it for everybody. You know what? You just got a bunch of jerk dicks that are going to go done and ruin it for everybody. Jesus Christ. Anyway, I forgot where... Where was I at, Engineer? I forgot what I was talking about. Oh, that's right. Bernie Sanders officially endorses Hillary Rotten Clinton... And I hope that you feel the bird, ass cracks. Feel the bird right up your ass. <laughs> anyway, folks, let me move on to another disgusting filth of leftist propaganda. And I'm talking about Obama lecturing the police at the Dallas Memorial Service today, commemorating the officers that died in this Black Lives Matter terrorist action that killed police officers in Dallas. All right? Now, folks, I don't know if you all saw the speech, but if you didn't, I strongly advise you to look at it. What a disrespect to police, to cops on a nationwide scale. Now, look, I am not denying that we have you know, some bad cops 
I mean, that's just human nature. You have bad apples everywhere. But by God, you cannot sit here and blame all police officers for an individual police officer's bad deed. I mean, I don't understand why all these Black Lives Matter supporters are willing to go out and just start popping caps at people for no freaking reason. I mean, if you're that upset, why don't you target the culprit that caused the scenario for you idiots to go out and cause havoc and violence? I don't understand it. I'm not advocating that. But at least there'd be some level of logic behind that. But no, you got these idiots going out here, popping caps, uh, you know, at police officers pumping gas, uh, you know, going up to people, just shooting random police officers. I mean, we just got a report there were shots fired. Capitol is on lockdown right now. So I'm saying, I mean, you know, what is the logic behind this? Obama lecturing the police as if the police need some lecturing? They were out here having to deal with the riffraff of society that you created, Obama, you created the riffraff, the criminality, the degeneracy that is rampant in our country today. You're the one that has robbed Americans of economic opportunity, and many of these folks have no other option because of lack of education, uh, lack of opportunity in their municipality, or whatever the case might be. They have no other opportunity but to submit to getting an entitlement from your goddamn government. All right? So... These police officers are having to police these ghettofied areas of whatever town across America. And folks, haven't you noticed that folks that typically are for Black Lives Matter, they don't have a goddamn job? That's why they can stay out four or five in the morning blocking freeways. You know, that's why they can stay out late at night for Christ's sake. They have no goddamn jobs, all right? The deals are getting hotter during the dear days of summer. Get 0% financing for 60 months on all John Deere compact tractors. Plus, get a best-in-class six-year powertrain warranty at no additional cost. Hurry in today for the hot deals of summer. Offer ends August 2nd, 2016, subject to approved installment credit with John Deere Financial. Terms, conditions, exclusions, and warranty limitations apply. See dealer for details. Visit your local John Deere dealer today to take advantage of special savings going on now. Find out more at myjohndeerdealer.com. If they had a job, if they had something to live for, if they had economic opportunity, if they had a, if they had a badass bimbo, uh, if they had a decent car, they wouldn't be out there risking something that they were potentially at risk to lose. But you see, folks, this government, this Obama administration has socially engineered America into, what is it, more than half of America doesn't even pay for their own goddamn food anymore? I mean, that makes me sick, folks, because I still pay for my goddamn food, and it makes me sick that i got to stand in line, all right? i got to stand in line in front of some fat tub who's pulling out a Lone Star card. That's what it is out here in Texas. I'm out here in an HEB out here in Austin, and it, does, it never fails. Some ass crack or some fat, disgusting tub broad with like three or four kids trailing her ass pulls out a food card, and is able to blow about five or $600 on goddamn groceries courtesy of a goddamn taxpayer, all right? I mean, this is what our police have to go into as it relates to supposed impoverished areas of society. These people are sustained enough that they could just hang out all day. And, folks, I strongly advise you, if you don't know what World Star Hip Hop is, I mean, just, you'll be shocked at the kind of activity that is deemed normal within the urban community. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I mean, look up World Star Hip Hop, Vines, or whatever the hell it might be. I mean, WSHH, and that's all you got to do. Look that up on YouTube and take a look at all the clips. And take a look at how World Star Hip Hop embraces this degeneracy through its medium. All right, take a look at how many people are just sitting around in a damn neighborhood drinking, and then when they get bored, they all start fighting with each other, for Christ's sake, man. All right? I'm not kidding around. I mean, if you have not, and I'm serious, I'm, most of you probably have it. I try to scour the Internet for all kinds of media and material because I'm a researcher. That's what I like to do. 
And folks, I've seen a countless number of these World Star Hip Hop clips, which is a comp- compilation of clips uh, that were provided by those within the urban community. And I'm telling you this right now, they emphasize uh, neighborhood brawls in the middle of the day. I'm serious. There's like, you know, urban communities right in the middle of the day all brawling with each other. Kids are hanging out witnessing this violence. Uh, and this is on World Star Hip Hop video clips. You've got uh, urban community uh, videotaping themselves being such disrespectful scoundrels to the law enforcement, cursing at them, uh, smoking drugs in front of them, being chased by them while they're on the vine, for Christ's sake. I mean, this is what these people are doing. So for Barack Obama to lecture the police it is an utter disgrace to not only the police, but to the law-abiding citizens of America, civil society of America. You understand that? That is a disrespect. I could not pallet. I could not pallet looking at this man being such a soulless bureaucrat, waving his finger at the police, saying that they need to do better. All right? I mean, give me a break. You're the scumbag that socially engineered this disgusting America's degeneracy, Obama. You're the one that made America poor. You're the one that put all these people on welfare and food cards and housing assistance and free medical care and free education and all this crap. It's your fault, Obama. How dare you? How goddamn dare you wave your finger and lecture the police in a, in a city in which they saw the murder, the terroristic murder of police officers on a mass scale. I mean, do you understand how heartless this soulless scumbag has to be to sit here and lecture police days after they had a terrorist act committed by Black Lives Matter on their police force? And folks, Barack Obama also promoted Black Lives Matter during this ridiculous, disgusting, disrespectful speech at this Dallas Memorial. That's right, baby. You need to look back at that speech. This man was promoting Black Lives Matter, a domestic terrorist organization that caused this Dallas shooting. That's why I'm saying, folks, the capitalist army, the Trump train, we're going to have to start taking the battle to Black Lives Matter. Because Black Lives Matter is being supported by Barack Obama, the DOJ, being financed by George Soros. And as I've stated, folks, we're going to have to go bare knuckle with these assholes. And I'm not talking about getting violent. I'm talking about pumping propaganda that will mess with the heads of Black Lives Matter. Because remember, folks, all right, Black Lives Matter as a whole are not very educated, all right? And that's why a homosexual power bottom like D-Ray, who is an HIV-AIDS advocate, can lead these people into a road of destruction. I'm serious. I mean, remember, D-Ray is an educational bureaucrat, all right? And you know how bureaucrats are. They think that they can manipulate any kind of population of people because they are smarter. I'm telling you this right now, folks. We need to plaster it all over Black Lives Matter. That D-Ray compared the strife of black people to that of fighting HIV AIDS. Let me tell you, if somebody would have compared my strife to the fight against HIV AIDS, I would, of course, somebody who would say that, I would be a little scared that they're HIV positive, so I I would put a rubber glove on, and then I'd punch them right in the freaking nose. You understand what I'm saying? I'm serious. You're going to compare my strife to the fight against HIV AIDS? I mean, every black folk should be offended by D-Ray with that statement, comparing the black strife to HIV AIDS. Look, I don't mean to go over this again, folks, but give me a goddamn break. How can you compare, all right, uh, taking a bad uh, meat in the can, all right, taking a bad old one eye in the colon, And compare that to the black stripe. Can somebody explain that to me? How can you compare taking an AIDS-infected penis up your poop chute 
and then contracting the AIDS, and then comparing that to Black Lives Matter, or comparing that to Black Stripe, or comparing that to the Black Struggle. That is an insult to not only the Black Struggle, to any struggle that is compared to HIV AIDS. Look, I know HIV AIDS is a serious problem, but let's be honest, folks. Come on now. I've talked about this, and I'm talking to you, LGBT. All right? Y'all talked about Pride. Oh, it's Pride. June is Pride Month. What are y'all proud about? Because as far as I'm concerned, I've done my research on the LGBT, all right? I mean, have y'all heard, and I've said it time and time again, you heard about these social media apps that uh, allow uh, homosexuals to partake in uh, sexual liaisons within a matter of five to ten minutes. And I'm talking about these apps called Grinder and what is it, Jacked. I mean, you can go right now on Craigslist right now, folks, if you don't believe me. You want to see pride? I'll show you pride, all right? Go to your Craigslist right now. Go click Casual Encounters and click M for M, which is male for male. And take a look at how many of those prideful gay men are asking for bareback sex, all right? Now, for you folks that are unaware and are taken back by what I'm discussing here, this needs to be discussed because this is what LGBT pride is, all right? Because they believe that, oh, well, you're going to stop me from doing barebacks? Oh, that's hatred. No, it's not, you stupid imbecile. All right, it means that people care about you and they don't want you to get a disease and then spread the shit around, for Christ's sake. Excuse my French. So what kind of pride can gay, and I'm not saying all gay people are like this, believe me, I'm, I'm, but a group is defined by its majority, folks, and the majority of gay people are partaking in this uh, random sex act activity, and the majority of them are not using one bit of protection. You know, because you could pretty much stop the age if you just threw a goddamn rubber on your, uh, you know, on your Johnson, for a lack of a better term. I mean, that's all it is. I mean, folks, I mean, I hate to be, you know, the educator of this LGBT lifestyle, but folks, you have to know this. Because if you don't know this, every LGBT uh opposition will say, well, you don't know what it's like. You don't know anything about the gay community. You don't know anything about what we do, what we are. Uh, yes, I do. And I know for the most part, you all are sexually promiscuous and that you could care less about your own health, about your own sexuality, about anything. I mean, the proof is in all the uh, documented evidence that I see tagged with homosexuality. And I'm talking about these uh, grinder apps, these jacked apps, these uh, uh, Craigslist. And, folks, I know people are, are looking at Craigslist right now. I'm getting tweets of people being like, are you kidding me? This is sick. What were you doing on here? Hey, I was on there, folks, because this is all over Austin, Texas, folks. I'm serious. I mean, folks, I don't even like going into a public bathroom because I'm afraid that I'm going to be in some urinal and having some goddamn uh, fruit bowl trying to grab my Johnson. And if that's going to happen, folks, I'm going to have to kick the crap out of them. And you see, if I kick the crap out of them, that's a hate crime. That's a hate crime. I'm serious, man. If I'm sitting there taking a whiz at a urinal, all right, and some freaking fruit bowl, some grinder fruit bowl right next to me, looks at my Johnson and tries to grab it, if I give this idiot a smack to the mouth and knock his ass out, it's a hate crime. So, folks, that's why I'm saying, man, I mean, this is very prevalent in the homosexual community. I'm serious, man. There is actual sexual activity happening in men's bathrooms. I'm not kidding around. Or y'all remember Larry Craig from Idaho? Y'all remember that asshole, huh? that old man? that was in a Minneapolis uh, uh, airport and decided to go to a bathroom, started toe-tapping the idiot next door, and it happened to be a damn cop? I mean, this is more prevalent than you can imagine. And this is pride? Huh? I mean, I thought pride meant that you want to preserve your community. I thought pride meant that you want to keep your community safe, not infect them with uh, infectious diseases. You understand? I'm not joking. 
I mean, how can you have any pride, LGBT, when you are not emphasizing trying to be safe in your random sexual liaisons? You understand that? And look, I don't mean to digress into this, folks, but I am trying to give you the mindset behind a D-Ray out here. And folks, did y'all read that advocate interview with him? Folks, I, I read it, folks, and it was disgusting, all right? The Advocate is a gay magazine that D. Ray gave an interview to, and in that interview he talks about, quote, cute boys and how the people wouldn't like him to be on Grinder, so he doesn't – he's blaming the people on why he's not on Grinder. all right? I mean, read the article for yourself. D. Ray, The Advocate – uh, Google that, and you'll read it for yourself, all right? I'm not joking. He was talking to whoever the hell he was interviewed. He's like, oh, look at that cute boy. Oh, my God. I swear to God, this is D-Ray. This is the leader of Black Lives Matter. He said it in this interview, for Christ's sake. Do you think that the violent thugs in Black Lives Matter would go out and lay their lives on the line if they knew that they were being led around by this fruit bowl? Jesus Christ, that's why I'm calling on the capitalist army. That's why I'm calling on the Trump train. We gotta plaster it in their face. We gotta plaster it. Yeah. We gotta plaster it in their faces that they're being led around by a bunch of fruit bowls out here for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ. Anyway, folks, let me get let me get the mic. Let me get the mic. All right, look, folks, I want to take some of your calls. We're already five minutes in to the second hour of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast. And, of course, I am your host, the man they call Ghost. And once again, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. Uh, before we get on to anything else, I'd like for everybody to please spread it around like wildfire that True Capitalist Radio is in effect and in the house, and we are live every Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. And, of course, the official website is blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. That's blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. And if you haven't already done so, folks, follow me on Twitter. The Twitter name to follow is Politics Ghost. All one word and no underscores. Politics Ghost is the name to follow on Twitter, baby, all right? Now, folks, I'm going to take a couple of calls here, and I want to hear from you. As a matter of fact, hey, engineer, clear some of these calls up, for Christ's sake. Clear some lines up, for Christ's sake. All right, the engineer is going to clear some lines up so that folks can call in if you want to happen to call in right now, all right? Uh, the number to call is 516-453-9903 is the number to call here. So uh, if you want to chime in on any of the things that we've been discussing here, well, by God, go ahead and give us a goddamn call. All right? I'm serious. Come on over and give us a goddamn call because I'm sick and tired of hearing ass cracks sitting over here trying to give any kind of credence to this domestic terrorist organization, Black Lives Matter, and its power bottom leader, D-Ray. All right? Jesus Christ. Anyway, folks, let's go ahead and take some callers here. I want to hear from you. What do you think about all this crap? Uh, what do you think about Black Lives Matter uh, being led around by some power bottom fruit bowl that's probably got the AIDS in D-Ray? What do you think about Loretta Lynch testifying in front of the House Judiciary Committee and not answering a goddamn thing? What do you think about Bernie Sanders officially endorsing Hillary Rotten Clinton? What do you think about Obama lecturing the Dallas police during the Dallas Memorial for the fallen officers. I want to hear from you. What do you have to say about it? 516-453-9903 is the number to call here. Let's go ahead and take some calls, shall we? We got area code 520. You're on the horn. What's up? I think it's absolutely hilarious because, um, well, first things first, if you could hold me on the line for um, radio, or, yeah, radio graffiti in 30 hour. But I was thinking Obama was uh, was saying – Oh, we don't know the uh, the possible motives of the Dallas killer and whatnot. And he's just trying to cover up for Black Lives Matter. He's just a total show for them. You know what I mean? No, you're absolutely right. I'm glad you actually saw the speeches out here. This idiot actually believes that it's the police's fault. Now, look, I'm not trying to say the police are completely absolved here, but we need to get the facts of every single case 
that these Black Lives Matter folk jumped the gun on, for a lack of a better term, because this is what uh, due process is about. This is what the rule of law is about. And, folks, we are losing the rule of law. And that's what that testimony of Loretta Lynch was proving to us. I mean, her lack of answers proves to us that America is losing the rule of law under the Obama administration. And we should pay emphasis to that, we should pay attention to that, and we should be focused on that. Anyway, thanks, you, uh, 520. I completely agree with you. Let's take some more callers here. How about 510? You're on the horn. What's up? Hey, is that me? That's you. I just want to say, fuck D-Ray, fuck Hillary Clinton. I don't blame you. I mean, no, no kidding, man. I mean, we need, if you don't really like D-Ray, you don't like Hillary Clinton, we need you to plaster the propaganda in the faces of Black Lives Matter that they're being led around by an LGBT movement. I'm telling you, they will not go out and be violent anymore if they knew that they're being led around by an LGBT cabal, all right? And I'm telling you, I'm not joking. That's why I'm asking Alex Jones's organization, man. We got to come together. We got to plaster this propaganda. We got to plaster it in the faces of these undereducated Black Lives Matter supporters to let them know that Black Lives Matter is an LGBT movement. And the sooner that we get as many Black Lives Matter supporters noticing that, contemplating that, debating that, the, the less, in my opinion, we will see violence from Black Lives Matter. Because you mean to tell me that some Black Lives Matter man, uh, some thug, you know, some, some big, huge black man who's tired of whatever, I don't know, who's being bamboozled by goddamn D-Ray and Black Lives Matter, you think that he's going to lay his life on the line, lay his freedom on the line, if he's being led around by a goddamn power bottom? I'm telling you this right now, man. He's not, these blacks are not going to follow this man. We need to put it as a point of emphasis to plaster the propaganda in front of these folks. They will not be violent if they knew that they were being led around by a potentially AIDS-invested uh, uh, power bottom. I, I guarantee it, man. I guarantee it, man. Jesus Christ. Who, who else do we got here? How about Eric code 919? You're on the horn. What's up? I see Loretta Lynch made a fatal move refusing to answer questions when she testified. Well, uh, what, what exactly do you believe could have been the appropriate approach? Because all I wanted was some answers to some questions, and she couldn't even give simple answers, man. Now, look, I understand that she may be having something to hide, and that's great. Mm. But, you know, you're a lawyer. You're a lawyer. You should be able to maneuver yourself through linguistic legal ease to be able to pacify both sides of the issue. And she wasn't even able to do that. You, you even saw some Democrats concern at, at her lack of answering questions. So what do you think that she should have said? I will answer the questions as I'm asked, I think. Um, exactly. And she would not even say yes, no, I don't know, I'm not sure. No. She went through all this jargon. Every time she was asked a question, a bunch of bureaucratic crap, non-answers. And this is the Attorney General, for Christ's sake, utterly disgusting. Jesus Christ. Let's take a couple of more callers here. We're going to move on to the next subject matter. Uh, we got area code 646. You're on the horn. What's up? Hey, Gus. It's me. Uh, I actually want to tell you something that you might like. Uh, turns out there's like this huge petition going on the Internet right now to call Black Lives Matter a terrorist organization. And they need about 5,000 more, I think, signatures to make it like be sent to the White House or something. How does that make you feel, man? Well, you know, I know that people like to make these White House petitions and so on and so forth, but if you want my personal opinion, not only do I think that they're meaningless, but I also believe that that is a way and a mechanism for the feds to track everybody who is in opposition to whatever that the government is trying to implement as their agenda. And that's why I don't even touch those White House petitions. I don't want to have my IP address I don't want any connection with that because, in my personal opinion, I think it's a trap. So that's why I haven't promoted it. I know a lot of people have been tweeting at me saying, hey, retweet this. It's a White House petition. White House petitions are meaningless. All right? 
I mean, look at all the White House petitions that have been signed, and every time that the administration has to answer for them, they just give a two-bit answer, sentence fragment, and it's over. And in my opinion, I believe it's a trap. They, they are tracking everybody who is uh, signing certain petitions as far as I'm concerned. I, I, don't, I don't trust the government, man. I mean, especially right now, when you've got our government trying to implement some level of violence so they can justify uh, martial law. You give to all kinds of stuff, from your buddy Jim, who's helping a cause that sounds good, to your cousin's random crowdfunding project. And now you can give to another cause, you. Because one in three of us isn't saving enough for retirement, Prudential is hosting the 4.01K Race for Retirement on September 17th. It's a fun run that helps you save more for you. Join us on September 17th at the Rose Bowl. Register for free at run401k.com. Prudential Insurance Company of America, Newark, New Jersey. Anyway, I want to continue going on to another subject matter. I'll take some calls here in a second. I want to talk a little bit about uh, a little bit of international news, folks. Now, I don't know if you folks are aware of the Hague, which is the international court. Uh, the Philippines actually brought up a case in the international court against China and its encroachment on the majority of the South China Sea. Now, for you folks who are unaware, uh, China has basically built a base in the middle of the South China Sea, you know, some kind of... Uh, artificial reef, so to speak, and they're able to land planes, they're able to, uh, you know, uh, keep artillery in this, like, uh, makeshift island that they artificially created in the middle of the South China Sea, and that has a lot of folks that border the South China Sea, the Philippines, uh, Thailand, uh, or whoever else, I'm, I, I, all those people out there, they are very precarious in that China believes that the South China Sea is theirs because it says China. Well, luckily, the Philippines had somebody that understood international law and actually took uh, the Chinese government to court, the international court at The Hague, to dispute this particular maritime dispute. And, folks, that decision came in today, and it came in in favor of the Philippines, and China is pissed off. China is upset. It's rattling its sabers. It's talking about implementing certain uh, theaters of combat. I'm telling you this right now. This really pissed off the country of China. And uh, I'm telling you, I don't know what's going to happen on the international front. I I've been saying this for a long time. I believe all these different issues that we're hollering about on the domestic front here in America, you know, Black Lives Matter, uh, you know, the refugee crisis, uh, trannies in bathrooms, uh, you know, all these red herring issues that we are, you know, sitting here discombobulating our minds with on the domestic front. Meanwhile, we've got our government attempting to try to confront Russia, all right, NATO and America trying to confront Russia near its border into a nuclear confrontation. And, folks, I should only advise you again, if you have not done so, Vladimir Putin has been damn near screaming, stating that why aren't you Western media covering the fact that we are this close to World War III? I mean, this is very dangerous. I don't know how to get uh, through to you people, he said to the Western media. I mean, I don't know how many more warnings Vladimir Putin has to tell us before we realize that our government is attempting to try to confront Russia in a nuclear war situation, man. I mean, Vladimir Putin even said that if Hillary Clinton is elected, that it's war. I mean, I don't know if y'all heard that. Of course, the Western media doesn't cover that. But he said, if Hillary Rotten Clinton is elected president, then it's war. So that doesn't fare very well for the future of our country, let alone what's happening here on the domestic front. And now that you've got a pissed-off China that's out here, uh, you know, basically pissed off that their uh, claims of the China Sea were overruled by the uh, international court, well, who do you think Russia is going to side with as it relates to a scorned China? Well, none other than China itself. And this is a very dangerous international situation that is not being covered by our mainstream media. And it's done so on purpose. Because 
None of these people in the administration want you to know the foreign policy that's being implemented by this administration, and it is a dangerous foreign policy. I mean, to confront Russia in a nuclear confrontation, it, it doesn't fare very well for anybody. Do you understand that? It doesn't fare very well for anybody. But you see, nobody's talking about that. Nobody's talking about nuclear war with Russia. Nobody's talking about the foreign policy potential World War III footing that we are in in today's America. You understand that? So that's why I'm saying, folks, I mean, while we're out here uh, being discombobulated with all kind of red herring issues in America, our government with NATO is confronting Russia on, on its borders. And uh, Vladimir Putin said if they continue to put missiles close to our border, we're going to retaliate, and uh, we're going to retaliate with nuclear capability. So how does that help anybody, folks? I mean, how does that help black lives? How does that, feel, how does that help gay lives? I mean, all that crap means nothing if a nuclear war happens and we're all just obliterated and, uh, you know, vaporized into complete oblivion. I mean, utterly disgusting, man. Jesus Christ, man. Anyway, folks, uh, without any further ado, uh, I have to do this, unfortunately, because uh, blog talk radio forces uh, us to give a rebuttal to the Chinese government because the communist government of China allows blog talk radio to broadcast within their country. So as a result, if we ever talk about or criticize China, we have to give a member of the communist government of China uh, time to rebut uh, any criticisms that yours truly uh, conducts on this broadcast. So, oh, Jesus Christ, without any further, is he on the line, engineer? Jesus Christ. All right, without any further ado, uh, Mr. Fortune Cookie, are you there, sir? Oh. You see, you motherfucker out there talking all kinds of garbage about the communist government of China. The head don't know, ghost. The South China Sea belongs to us. It belongs to China. And now the world is going to reap the, the benefit of the China wrath. That's right. We are not going to take this anymore. You motherfucker need to understand that we own the China Sea. We own America too, motherfucker. We own all your debt. We own all your country. That's right. So for all you stupid motherfucker out there talking garbage about the communist government of China in America, we are taking a yeast. That's right. We are taking a yeast. And we are going to look for each and every one of you American motherfuckers that ever talk garbage about the communist government of China. I'm telling you, you too, ghost. You on the list too. You on the list too. You on top of the list, ghost. When we come over and take over your country, we're going to take you especially, motherfucker. We're going to put you in a consecration camp. We're going to put you in a re-education camp, motherfucker. Ah, you motherfucker in the world don't know the power of China. But you motherfucker in the world about to know the power of China. And I'm telling you motherfuckers, this last time, one last time, you want to know why we do what we do? Do you want to know why we do what we do? We do it for Chairman Mao! We do it for Chairman Mao! We do it for Chairman Mao! Oh no! Oh no, my stomach hurt. Oh no. Oh no. 
Nothing else to say. I am Mr. Fortune Cookie. Thank you very much. All right, get this idiot up. Get him out of here, for Christ's sake. You heard him, right? You heard the representative of the communist government of China. These people think they own everything. They think they own the South China Sea. They think they own America. They think, I mean, you heard him. You heard him. Jesus Christ, it needs to stop eating those bad egg rolls, by the way, too, man. I'm sick and tired of hearing them there. Anyway, look, we're going to move on to something else. I just wanted to touch on this South China Sea thing, all right? Uh, the Hague, the International Court, rules against China and the South China Sea, uh, rules in favor of the Philippines, basically stating that the South China Sea doesn't belong to China. So anyway, let me move on to another subject matter, folks, because... Uh, this is the last subject matter to talk about before I go off on something else. Did y'all hear David Cameron? Uh, I tweeted this this morning uh, to my folks in Britannia, to my brethren across the pond in Britannia. David Cameron says Brexit is a non-binding agreement, a non-binding vote. Oh, oh, the prognosticator, a prognosticator strikes again. Y'all remember me? questioning the fact that this potential Brexit vote, whether it's passed or not, prior to Brexit, could potentially not be not be really implemented because the initial referendum vote, I read it, I've, I've looked it up, it's a non-binding vote. And I was waiting, all right? I was waiting for somebody within the Britannia government apparatus to say something about Brexit being a non-binding vote. And look who said it. None other than Dave Cameron. Right before he's about to jump ship and get the hell out of 10 Downing Street, all right, and he's going to bring in Theresa May, which I can't believe they're comparing her to Margaret Thatcher. I would never, in my wildest dreams, would ever see Margaret Thatcher wear a goddamn hijab, all right? I would never hear Margaret Thatcher. Look, I love Margaret Thatcher. I think Margaret Thatcher is a true Britannia hero, a true capitalist hero on top of that. All right? I mean, she was down with Pinochet. I mean, that's how down of a goddamn capitalist Margaret Thatcher was, all right? And to compare her to Theresa May is an insult, all right? Is an insult to goddamn Margaret Thatcher. Margaret Thatcher was a Britannia hero, a capitalist hero, a world hero. And why don't feminists ever look to Margaret Thatcher as a means of inspiration? Huh? Because she was not a leftist, all right? She didn't oblige this whole goddamn liberal crap, all right? So anyway, I'm digressing with the Theresa May commentary, but... Let me tell you something right now. Now they're coming in with the non-binding stuff. I've talked about this. Y'all remember, right? If you don't believe me, go back in the archive and look at any part of which I talk about Brexit. There was a few shows where I talked about it, but I didn't want to demoralize Britannia. So I didn't emphasize the fact that the EU referendum was non-binding. I read it. I read it myself before even Brexit even came about. I even said it before the Brexit vote. And look at what's happening, folks. Dave Cameron saying that uh, Brexit is non-binding, and it's up to the parliament to decide. Oh, oh, you see, they're doing the same damn thing that these Republicans and Democrats in the primaries are doing to the American people. All right? I mean, they're basically stating that the vote, the people's vote doesn't count, and that, uh, you know, these uh, people that are bureaucrats are the sovereigns. They're the sovereigns of the country. Like the parliament is the supra-authority that nullifies the will of the people. I mean, what a joke. I mean, what an utter joke. Dave Cameron, you piece of crap. I mean, not only did you ruin your legacy, you've ruined your whole entire name. You stupid lying scumbag. Oh, my God. 
Anyway, folks, once again, before I move on to the next subject matter, Dave Cameron saying Brexit is a non-binding referendum and that it's up to Parliament to make the decision. There we go. How you like that, Britannia? After all that campaigning, after all that money spent on those stupid leaflets that damn Dave Cameron sent to everybody's house out there in the U.K., after every single thing, Dave Cameron said, oh, you know, it's not binding. It's not binding. And did you hear this stupid fruity bastard when he uh, uh, made the announcement that he was going to step down and that he had the hot mic on and he was going into the 10 Downing Street and right before he closed the door he was like uh, singing to himself like he was Mary freaking Poppins or something? I mean, what a sick fuck, man. Excuse my French. I'm sorry for cursing, but this stuff is it just, it just makes me sick. Anyway, folks, I'm going to take a couple of more minutes here, and I want to talk a little bit about something uh, that has somehow swept the goddamn pop culture within the past couple of weeks or a week or so. And I'm talking about this ridiculous, stupid, pathetic, juvenile, idiotic game called Pokemon Go, all right? Now, let me explain something to you people, all right? What in the hell are you people doing? With your fucking lives. Excuse my French. I'm sorry I'm cursing. What are you doing with your lives? When, I mean, look, I'm seeing these people all over Austin, Texas. I mean, I'm, I'm seeing them all over the place looking for stupid Pokemon creatures on their cell phone. I mean, what, I mean, how far have we been thrown back in the human mental evolutionary phase for adults, for adult people? to be lured by such a ridiculous, fictitious bunch of childish crap. I mean, good God, man. I mean, I just, what is the American public's problem? I mean, I just think that, look, I'm not trying to say anything about video games and gamers and all that stuff. Hey, that's your prerogative, all right? But what in the hell are you people winning? Are y'all getting money? Are y'all winning money? I mean, what are y'all doing? You're wasting your time. You're wasting your life. Good God, man. And you know what? This is America, folks. This is why we have Black Lives Matter causing havoc all over America while everybody just sits there and, 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 and waxes their carrot. And, and look, people are saying, don't knock it till I try it. What is there to try, man? I've got a life. I don't need some fucking fictitious uh, augmented reality-based stupid application to occupy my time. I mean, I'm a capitalist, baby. I make money. That's the game I play. And whenever I win, I win real money that can buy me things, that can buy me uh, houses, cars. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, give me a break. Jesus Christ. And, you know, it's just a testament to how far down the goddamn uh, man-child rabbit hole that we are in as a society today. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I know that there's people that love this game. I don't know why. You need your head examined as far as I'm concerned because there are a lot more important things to worry about than sitting here and, uh, you know, wandering around town looking for virtual monsters, for Christ's sake, man. Jesus Christ, man. And moreover, folks, I've heard that there's already car accidents related to this stupid game. Like, people are looking for goddamn virtual Pokemon or whatever the hell it is. I mean, this is stupid. This is stupid, man. I mean, I cannot believe that this is America. I'm not sorry, man. I cannot believe that this is the shitbag America that we're living in. And look, I'm sorry. I may have to throw an explicit uh, rating on this show, but I can't believe that this is America, man. I can't believe that this is, you know, uh, 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 America. You know what I'm saying? I mean, give me a freaking break. And moreover, folks, don't you know that this Pokemon game is nothing more than a wide-open uh, uh, gateway, or sh should I say a wide-open hole into your cell phone, into your private contacts, into your location, into your emails? I mean, you people are stupid, man. I'm sorry. Anybody who downloaded this Pokemon Go, you people are idiots. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm sorry, man. I mean, it's bad enough, with all due respect, it's bad enough that you people play all these video games 
and you watch cartoons all day, and you wax your carrot to anime and all this other crap, but this just is the cherry on the top. I'm serious, man. I mean, this just goes to show uh, the mental health crisis that's happening in America today, man. I'm sorry. All right? I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, man. I'm, I'm not kidding around, man. I mean, this is just goes to show you the depravity and the lack of life that people actually have, the lack of interaction, the lack of communication that people actually have, that they have succumbed to the fact that they have to go look for virtual little stupid Pokemons all over the freaking city, for Christ's sake, man. I'm serious. I, I, and you know what? I'm glad that, uh, you know, I heard that, uh, you know, robbers now, or, or uh, you know, armed robbers or luring dorks, you know, with this stupid game or something. You know what? Good. You know what I'm saying? I'm serious, man. I'm sick and tired of this man-child crap, man. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of man-children crap, man. I mean, this is why America sucks right now. This is why you got Obama in power. This is why Loretta Lynch can say nothing in testimony, for Christ's sake. This is man-child America. This is man-child fucking America. God damn it, man-child America. God damn it. God damn it, freaking man-child freaking America. This is man-child America. I mean, grow up. Grow up, you idiots. Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I mean, this just goes to show you uh, the mental health crisis that's happening in our country today. People are so antisocial and can't communicate with one another. they got to sit here and download a stupid game and wander around like a bunch of idiots all over town looking for virtual Pokemon on a goddamn application. I mean, give me a break. Give me a goddamn Give me the mic. Give me the goddamn mic, for Christ's sake, man. And you wonder why no one is playing with your private parts? I mean, with all due respect, and you wonder why no one's giving you any nookie, huh? No one's, you know, uh, giving you any attention. I mean, look at you. You're downloading a stupid game that, I mean, who watches Pokemon besides, like, 10- or 11-year-old kids? I mean, Jesus Christ, man. Oh, my God. And, look, I know that there's people out here that are pissed off that I'm talking about this. Hey, look, tough titty, all right? Tough titty. All right? Just take it like it and eat it. You're a goddamn man-child, and you need to grow up. And the reason why you're all alone, and you're a dumb piece of crap, and no one's playing with your private parts, you're getting no goddamn uh, uh, attention from any kind of significant other, is because of the man-child garbage that you are conducting yourself in. I mean, haven't you idiots seen the 40-year-old virgin, that movie? Huh? Have y'all ever seen that? I mean, the 40-year-old virgin is exactly each and every one of you Pokemon Go downloading jerk dicks right there, all right? I mean, if you haven't seen it, uh, look at it. I mean, it's a funny movie. You'll laugh at it, for Christ's sake. But at the same time, look at the character that plays the 40-year-old virgin. That's effing you. That's effing you. Downloading a stupid augmented reality game trying to capture virtual monsters and virtual Pokemon? I mean, do you understand how stupid that sounds, man? It's stupid! Jesus Christ, no wonder America's fallen, man. No wonder America's being flushed down the man-child toilet, for fuck's sake. Jesus Christ, excuse my French, folks. I'm sorry I'm cursing more than usual. But freaking hell, man. Jesus Christ. Anyway, folks, I'm going to go ahead and get of radio graffiti, because I'm, I'm a little pissed off, especially looking at all these idiots, man. You know, at first, when I saw people looking around, like, you know, with their cell phones and crap, I thought they were doing, like, grinder or something, and they were looking for their schlong head to suck on, or, 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 or their meat to take in their can, but no, these idiots are out here looking for virtual Pokemon! I mean, at least, at very least, the fruits that are out here on Grindr are actually going to get their private parts played with, unlike you idiots, all right? Now, of course, they're risking disease and they're risking all kinds of stuff, but hey, at least they're living. What the hell's your excuse? 
Jesus Christ. Anyway, folks, let's go ahead and get down to radio graffiti, for Christ's sake. And for you folks that are unaware, all right, radio graffiti is the part of the broadcast where the spectators become a part of the spectacle. All you have to do is give me a call at 516-453-9903. When I call on your area code, you have exactly three to four seconds to say whatever it is that's on your mind. Do you understand that? It's as simple as that. And when I call on your area code, you better not be a goddamn Helen Keller deaf mute, all right? Jesus Christ. Anyway, and look, people are saying there's police officers who play Pokemon Go. Well, they should be fired, all right? They should be fired. If they're doing that on the job, fire their asses. Freaking man children policing the freak. I get the, I don't want to talk about this anymore. Anyway, do we got any uh, uh, radio graffiti calls, engineer? All right, well, we're going to go ahead and get to Radio Graffiti right now, all right? I'm not very hype about Radio Graffiti, especially after talking about Pokemon Go, and I've got all these man-children tweeting me up saying, Oh, Holly, why are you talking garbage about that goat? I can't believe it. Files is not cable. We're wired differently, which means you can get the fastest internet available with equal upload and download speeds from 50 to 500 megs. So you can upload 200 photos before your favorite song is finished. Click the ad and switch to Files today to get our best offer ever. So anyway, you people are a bunch of man children, and that's why, folks, with all due respect, if you're playing the stupid game, uh, I can almost guarantee that no one is playing with your damn private parts. I can guarantee it. And if they are, they're, they're a fat, disgusting piece of gamer trash just like you, with all due respect. Anyway, let's, let's just... I don't want to talk about this anymore. This makes me sick, all right? Anyway, let's get to some goddamn radio graffiti calls. We got area code 915, radio graffiti. Hello, ghost. This is me, Mario. I'm trying to fix your toilet, but your dog, Templeton, he keeps on eating the poo-poo that's coming out of your toilet. Uh, shut up and shove a meatball up your ass there, Mario, all right? Uh, 484 Radio Graffiti. Uh, hey, ghost. Um, apparently, I just wanted to say that uh, you should check out this guy. Uh, he made this uh, song for Donald Trump called The Donald Trump Walk. You should try it out. Oh, well, I'm, I'm sure that it's, uh, you know, very enlightening. 435, Radio Graffiti. This is True Feminist Radio. True Feminist Radio. I am your host, the feminist they call Go. Give him political correctness, give him death. Radio Graffiti. Ghost, how can you be hating on man children when we compromise like three fourths of your listeners? Pinkie Pie is the best pony, by the way. I couldn't even That's understand you because you're a non communicating piece of crap that sounds like your tongue is a little lazy. Can you explain that again? I said, how can you be hating on man children when we compromise three fourths of your listeners? And then I said, Pinkie Pie is the best pony, by the way. Yeah. Also, yeah. Well, you, you know. Yeah. Thing? You know what? You know what? Go, go drink some bleach, ass crack. All right. Jesus Christ! Anonymous radio graffiti. Adolf Gosler raise a tune that comes in mighty handy when asking a tranny after hacking the hicks are hucked. 
You see, I mean, what, what does everybody have like a, some some sort of a speech problem going on or something? I don't get it, man. I mean, I couldn't even understand what that hell. Well, I mean, is everybody having a heavy tongue? Huh? I mean, Jesus Christ. Anyway, who else do we got? We got uh, 978 Radio Graffiti. I was on there, folks, because... I'm your baby bus. I heard you had a piss fetish, so I'm making this video just for you. Oh, that's very baby bunch. Jesus Christ. There's no, I mean, I don't understand how that's funny. All right? I mean, it's not even funny anymore, man, all right? I mean, that's played out, all right? Get some more better material. Go to jokes.com and rip something off, you freaking lamers. 403, Radio Graffiti. Hey, Ghost, I uh, just uh, wanted to give a shout-out to all the people who are trying to call in. We're up in the sticks here on a fishing trip in northern Alberta. Got absolutely garbage reception. Been hung up on three times. You got to just keep trying, guys. Happy Taco Tuesday, Ghost, and I'll see you in the post-show. Hey, man, thanks a lot. I appreciate the, the words, and I'm, I'm glad you're encouraging these people that are all, oh, uh, I can't get through. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Anyway, who else do we got? We got uh, 765, Radio Graffiti. What? Is that me? You're on the horn, yeah. 765. Yeah, listen, dude, um, here you are talking about how this country is so immature and you're on here cussing and talking about fat people who are actually trying to do a few steps on this Pokemon thing. And um, man children, you know, these man child things, you you represent everything to do with man child. Oh, is that, is that right? Is that right? Yeah, including your how, is, how, how am I, how am I, hey, hey, shit. hey. Hey, oh, lie me. Oh, hey, oh, hey, shut up. Oh, uh, how am I, how am I encompassing that? Boy, boyhood manhood crap. Because you, you don't even know how to be a real man. You don't know what real, real, real values and real. Uh, hey, hey, are, are you in America? Real things are that you ought to Are be you in America? Oh, capitalist bullshit. It's just collect more. Are, money hey, are you in America, America you stupid skank? Capitalist bullshit. You Are you in America? Charity? You call that a real man? Come oh, on. Shut up. And go shove some fish and chips up your twat, you stupid, dumb idiot. Jesus Christ. Oh, look at me. I'm Mrs. Mary Poppins, and you don't know what you're talking about. You're gonna shut up! Stupid, dumb, freaking idiot. Jesus Christ. Go, yeah, go, go stick a pot pie up your ass. Bring an anonymous radio graffiti. Don't worry, boys. The engineer... Is in your ear. Would have dodged that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. R- real funny ass crack. Shut up. Just shut up. I'm telling you, people are pissing me off, man. You understand? Anyway, we got 415, Radio Graffiti. Me and my wife's daughter, the popper, with my friend, you know, shave. <laughs> What are you doing? Hey, 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 let me let me tell you something first and foremost, all right? Pinochet wouldn't throw me off no goddamn helicopter because I'm a capitalist. You understand that? And Pinochet was a militant capitalist, all right? Ayande, the guy who won the supposed popular vote in Chile, deserved to be assassinated as far as I'm concerned. It's one of the only uh, foreign policy objectives that I agree with Henry Kissinger in implementing. All right? Allende deserved to die as far as I'm concerned. He was a leftist piece of trash, and you can tell everybody I said that. 520, Radio Graffiti. Here they come. Riding their way across the Connell U.S., it's lots and lots of Black Lives Matter protesters. We've got big protesters, little protesters, fast protesters, slow protesters, protesters shooting protesters. No matter what shape or size, they'll shoot any white cop they find. So get your credit card ready and order lots and lots of Black Lives Matter protesters. Call them. Yeah, I, hey, hey, you don't even have to order them. They're all around, for Christ's sake, rabble-rousing, shutting down freeways and all this other crap. Anonymous Radio Graffiti. It's water. Free. Freaking water. Free. No, no. Don't start Pokemon in this freaking program now, boy. 
Don't you even dare. Jesus Christ. Who the hell else do we got going on over here for Christ's sake? 516-453-9903 is the number to call there, boy. Anyway, we got 480 Radio Graffiti. Jesus Christ, you're fapping the fruity ass music. That's just great. 541 Radio Graffiti. Again, a true capitalist guitarist strikes again here. Anonymous radio graffiti. I'm telling you, man, I'm jerking D Ray dick. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Go ahead and ejaculate and release. Uh, the- shut up, you sick, twisted pricks. That's a disgusting splice. You understand that? Freaking disgusting, man. 410 radio graffiti. The climax of the scene was this girl having a really fierce orgasm, which pushed all of her yeast infection onto the other girl's face. It wasn't a good day for anyone. Oh, my God. Why? 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 You freaking sick idiots are not right in the head. Jesus Christ. 712 Radio Graffiti. Hey, what's up, Gus? What's going on? Hey, you want to meet up for some drinks later in Austin? Oh, Jesus Christ. Not this idiot again. Stop asking me out for drinks. All right? Take about ten steps away from my freaking butt crack with a damn fruit bowl talk. Go call D-Ray. All right? He likes cute... Uh, 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 I want to talk about cute boys. That's what he talked about in this interview with the gay magazine, The Advocate, old D-Ray. Jesus Christ. The Teutonic Plague, Radio Graffiti. Hello, liberals. My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed the United States. Prepare to die. <laughs> That's pretty good there, Teutonic. All right, how about 708, Radio Graffiti? Hey, go this is G. What's up, man? Hey, what's going on, G? How you doing, G? I'm doing good. I'm having a summer vacation in Florida right now. Happy Taco Tuesday from Florida, man. Hey, happy Taco Tuesday, G. Thank you for calling up, and uh, you make sure you get yourself a damn tan in Florida, and uh, be careful, depending on what level or what city in Florida that you're in, but, uh, you know, make sure to live it up, all right? How about anonymous radio graffiti? <laughs> Oh my God! Give me a freaking break, man! Jesus! Nine five six radio graffiti. Hi, guys. I'm just eating tacos with uh, Sonata Dust and Adagio and Ariel Blaze right here. Taco Tuesday. All right. Well, I'm glad you're eating tacos on Taco Tuesday, man. Uh, congrats. How about 210 Radio Graffiti? Caroline. Fruitcake never tasted so good. I've been inclined. Jesus Christ, shut up, all right? And look, I don't even want to think about that right now, all right? I mean, you, you people are continuously talking about Christmas. I don't want to talk about it, man. I don't know how many times i got to tell you stupid fruit bowls. 818, Radio Graffiti. Hey, Ghost. I had some interesting statistics you are talking about, about those uh, Craigslist casual encounters. 
and a Tinder and Grinder. I, you know, I saw that Grinder has six million gays on it, but then I looked at Tinder and there was fifty million straight people. And then I looked at LA Craigslist today, and there was twelve pages of straight casual encounters, but only eleven pages of gay casual encounters, and that got me kind well, of that's sad. Because I thought that's, about that's, the divorce. Well, that's because in L.A., I mean, you know, it's not very hard to score in L.A. Everybody's, you know, I mean, unless you're a fat piece of garbage, I mean, you should be able to find something in L.A., right? Well, yeah, of course you should, but it just kind of weirds me out that, you know, uh, gay people have this uh, stigma that uh, that they're so promiscuous, and they are, and I'm not defending that, but, you know, there's much more promiscuous great people out there. I mean, look at this, 50 oh, no, million hey, Tinder I'm not, users. I'm not denying that. Believe me, I think that there's a lot of people that are on Craigslist, Grinder, Jack, that are married and that are uh, straight and uh, uh, that are conducting themselves in this activity, and I think it's just as disgusting. Believe me, I, I mean, that's, I mean, the whole idea, whether straight, gay, uh, whatever type of trisexual sex, if it's promiscuous without protection, I think it's irresponsible, and I think it's pathetic. And, you know, uh, for the most part, I don't ever hear the homosexual community emphasizing that, hey, look, maybe we should, uh, you know, maybe we should have protection. Maybe we should emphasize protection. We could have all the s- sexual liaisons we want as long as we utilize some level of protection. I mean, it isn't going to protect you from every disease, but obviously the deadly ones. Am I correct? Yeah, you are absolutely correct, and I completely agree with you. And, you know, that's interesting that you say that about single people on Tinder because I looked at their statistics, and, you know, only 52% of Tinder users are single. Well, you know, and you see, that's the problem. You see what I'm saying? I mean, everybody is in a selfish – and I'll come back to you later on if you happen to stay in the third hour. You know, everybody who is – has a significant other, they're just not happy with being with that significant other. They think that, oh, well, I want to see what else is out there. They're on there on Tinder. They're on the straight Craigslist. They're on the gay Craigslist. They're on the grinder. They're on Jack. I mean, folks, you need to realize if you're lucky enough in this day and age, especially in this anti-social society, if you're lucky to be with somebody, don't think that you're better than you actually are, all right? I mean, unless you're somebody who has countless people coming up to you all the time trying to get in your pants, well, then maybe I understand. But if you're just somebody who just happened to find somebody who uh, is now, uh, you know, uh, your significant other, don't go out there and try to cheat on these people. I mean, give me a break. You're lucky to even be with somebody. You're lucky even somebody gives a crap about you to be with you, to take care of your problems, to put up with your crap. Jesus Christ, man. Anyway, anonymous, radio graffiti. Jesus Christ. I'm not sure we got another Helen Keller deaf mute, for Christ's sake. 512, radio graffiti. Today I want to describe Shut up with the Pokemon crap, you dumb scumbag. All right. 646 Radio Graffiti. Here comes Ghostler. Here comes Ghostler sliding down 6th Street. Nine inch penis. Too big for him. Gonna break down his legs. Always oh, already crippled now. Now, shut up, you stupid fruit bowl. Give me a break. Fruity ass. Freaking Christmas carols. That's that's just great. Four six nine radio graffiti. Shut up with the goddamn Christmas carols. Anonymous radio graffiti. Yeah, we can't even we can't even understand you with your cheap ass computer. How about eight one three radio graffiti? On the twelfth day in office, Obama gave to us shameful treatment of veterans, IRS tyranny, Benghazi cover up, fast and furious spying on Americans, broken red lines, scolding Israel, Obama care. Taxes on achievers, a pork filled stimulus bill is speech to the brotherhood, and he kept his threat to change our country. Yeah, yeah, we, we know, we know that. I'm telling you, I understand what you're saying. Uh, anonymous, radio graffiti. Hey, Ghostler, 
My daddy was doing my free ass. That's why I wrote this song. I won't be your father figure. I'll be here naked. In your eyes. In your eyes. I won't be your father figure. I'll be here naked. In your eyes. You son of a bitch, goddammit! You scumbag! I'm sick of it! I'm sick of this crap! You scumbag! Sake. You know what? I'm glad the live broadcast is almost over. We got about a minute and left on the live broadcast. I'm going to continue a little bit in the post-show edition of the True Capitalist radio show. And uh, the only way to listen to that is if you're on the phone at 516-453-9903 or catch some sort of a stream that's being broadcasted on the internets out here. Or you can go and download the well, the third hour in the podcast at blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. That's blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. All right? And that's where you can get the uh, broadcast of the third hour directly after we're done, blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. And if you haven't already done so, folks, please follow me on Twitter. The Twitter name to follow is Politics Ghost. All one word, no underscores. Politics Ghost is the name to follow. Once again, folks, this is serious business. I am calling on the capitalist army to go out and plaster it all over Black Lives Matter faces that D-Ray is a power bottom and Black Lives Matter is an LGBT organization. All right? And I guarantee you Black Lives Matter will not commit violence if they know they're being led around by a potential HIV AIDS advocate. I'm out of here! Anyway, folks, we are now in the third post-show edition hour of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast. And, of course, I am your host, the man they call Ghost, and once again, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me, whether it's live or in the archive. I want to thank you for tuning in with me. Uh, This is a Taco Tuesday edition here, folks, and I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. Uh, Once again, I cannot emphasize anymore the level of corruption that is happening right before our very eyes on every level of government. Moreover, the, this government, this liberal regime that's in power today is backing up this Black Lives Matter movement, and we've got to propagandize the uneducated Black Lives Matter folk into understanding that this, what they are following, what they are killing for, what they are committing violence for is an LGBT movement. And as soon as they figure that out, they will no longer commit violence in the name of somebody who potentially has HIV AIDS in D-Ray, the supposed leader of Black Lives Matter, who supposedly has a connection with the DOJ and Loretta Lynch to cause all this violence so that this this Obama administration can justify martial law. And I wish somebody would have asked that question in the Loretta Lynch testimony on what exactly this whole D-Ray situation and him supposedly having a connection with the DOJ and Loretta Lynch, what is this all about? You understand that? And, of course, she probably would have given another non-answer, like, well, I don't know exactly what you're talking about. I'm like, meh, meh, meh. Jesus Christ. Anyway, folks, look, I don't want to be here too much longer, for Christ's sake, man. I mean, I've been up. Uh, you know, tweeting, doing all kinds of stuff all morning, all throughout the day. I watched that whole goddamn ridiculous non-testimony by Loretta Lynch. I watched that ridiculous speech by Barack Obama at the Dallas Memorial when he was lecturing the police and basically promoting the domestic terrorist organization Black Lives Matter. This is our president. Oh, I mean, Obama was lecturing the police right after they had a tragedy that killed five police officers in Dallas. He's lecturing the police, pointing their fingers at them, and then promoting Black Lives Matter in the same 
goddamn speech. What a disgusting, pathetic human being that we have for president today. What a sociopath, psychopath, bureaucratic scumbag. Jesus Christ, how anyone can still back up the left after all this disgusting, corruption, uh, pathetic lawlessness, the corrosion of law and order. I don't understand how anyone could still back up this liberal regime that's in power today. I cannot understand it. I don't understand it. Summer is about family and fun. And when it's centered on a great meal, it's just better. Good thing your neighborhood Albertsons has great deals on all the favorites that make summer just better. This week, serve up boneless, skinless chicken breast or thighs perfect for grilling just $1.77 a pound when you buy three pounds or more. And pick up sweet savings on fresh local strawberries, one pound packages, two for $3. Tastier meats, sweeter savings, better summers. Albertsons, it's just better. Jesus Christ. Anyway, folks, I'm going to go ahead and get to some more post-show radio graffiti on the third hour. And for you folks that are unaware, uh, we are going to go into the post-show radio graffiti where, of course, if you want to take your two to three, or three to four seconds, excuse me, to say your little radio graffiti spill, that's your goddamn problem. Or if you want to ask a question and have some kind of a dialogue, you can also do that, too. That's what the whole post-show edition is all about. All right? And, of course, this isn't broadcasted live. This is, of course, exclusive to the folks that are on the, uh, on the phone right here right now or that are listening to us uh, via some kind of stream somewhere on the Internet. So without any further ado, folks, we're going to go into the post-show third-hour radio graffiti edition right now. <laughs> All right, how we go? Uh, 518 Radio Graffiti. Hey, Ghost. Uh, first off, I want to ask you about, uh, have you seen the Pokemon Go, how people are saying it could be a government tracking device? I think I just said that, uh, you know, if you'd clean the crustaceans out of your ears, uh, you know, you'd, uh, you know, understand that I had said that if you download this application that you're giving uh, whoever is in charge of this application every tracking of your movements, your emails, everything, everything. I mean, a security company already came out and said that crap. Jesus Christ, man. Clean your ears, jackass. How about uh, 818 Radio Graffiti? Hey, Ghost. Yesterday I was listening to Keemstar's broadcast, and he was talking shit about you. He said, you know, he was actually about to send all of his fans uh, after you, and he's saying, you know, if this guy's going to talk shit, I'll come out to Austin, and I'm going to throw some, I'm gonna throw a few punches up this asshole. Yeah, no joke. right. Are you kidding me? He ain't going to come out from Buffalo, New York, to come out here to Austin, Texas, to come over here and do nothing, for Christ's sake. I'll slap the remaining uh, little peach fuzz on his bald-ass head right off if he comes over here to Austin, Texas, and try to do something, all right? I'll give him a real drama alert and split his nuts between his head to the back of his ass. You understand that? I'd stomp his Keemstar teeth so far down his throat, he'd be able to chew his own drama alert asshole. So give me a break. Anonymous Radio Graffiti. This is True John Tron Radio. True John Tron Radio. This is John Tron. <laughs> the badass of bootlegs. Give him obscure games or give him that. You jump there, fire! Death, 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 death. Broadcasting from a studio apartment in beautiful New York City. And now, Hilding from here, your host, Mr. Not So Grump himself. And we call John Tron. Uh, I mean, what what the hell was that? First of all, stop remaking my goddamn intro. But secondly, I don't understand what the hell that was supposed to be about. I don't even know that scumbag. All right. I mean, was I supposed to be insulted? What is that? A gamer? Is that Fruit Bowl gamer or something? I don't know who the hell that scumbag is. So, you know, I guess you did that for not three three seven radio graffiti. Hey, Soft Magic here. Sorry for not enunciating earlier. I'm just a little bit inebriated on this Taco Tuesday. I got a serious topic I want to bring up with you. Have you heard about this um, whole illegal organ har- harvesting program that China is doing? They're uh, killing hundreds of thousands of political prisoners each year with their organs. You can go get a transplant there in like three weeks, where normally you'd have to wait like a year for a transplant in any other no, country. No, absolutely. I know exactly what you're talking about. As a matter of fact, they're going into Tibet. 
the Chinese, and snagging Tibetan monks, which, you know, they leave a very healthy lifestyle. They don't drink any alcohol. They don't consume any uh, toxins, you know. Uh, they keep themselves in great shape. That's what they're doing. They're taking these Tibetan monks, and they're killing them, and they're harvesting their organs, and they're sending the organs, I believe, to Japan or another one of these few Asian countries so that they can have these supposed transplants. No, you know what? I know exactly what you're talking about. This is a black market uh, in the Asian community as it relates to organs. And uh, China, as you talked about killing political prisoners for their organs, I mean, they're going right after the Tibet, uh, the Tibetan monks. I, I've, I've, known about, I've known about that for a while already, man. I think it's a shame. You know, I, I, I never hear anybody talking about the uh, struggle of Tibet I never hear any uh, anybody uh, talk about how the Dalai Lama, who is supposed to be the leader of the Tibetan people, hasn't been to Tibet in, what, decades? So I, I don't understand, uh, you know, we're all talking about all these other issues. Meanwhile, we've got China over here harvesting organs with Tibet, Tibetan monks. Uh, I mean, this is a legit uh, issue here, and I think people need to put a little bit of a point of emphasis on it, to say the least, all right? Anyway, th thank you for bringing that up. That's a very good uh, issue to discuss. And uh, But that's China. And you see, folks, if uh, Loretta Lynch and D-Ray cause some level of uh, violence to justify totalitarianism, uh, martial law, well, that soon is going to come to America, folks. Huh? Harvesting organs of America. You don't think so? Uh, you don't think so? That's what they thought in China. Anonymous Radio Graffiti. So I can take more than one man at a time. D Ray? Fuck my. Jesus Christ. Shut up. First of all, you're too loud and you're blowing the ears off of anybody that has headphones on, you disrespectful prick. Anyway, we got uh, 727 Radio Graffiti. Hey, I don't know if this is right exactly. Oh, by the way, happy Talk Tuesday. But I believe Bernie Sanders is still running his campaign, right? No, he's not. He endorsed Hillary Clinton today. You didn't see the speech? No, I saw it, but I think he's still running. I don't know exactly. I'm not like a um, like an expert on this sort of stuff, but is it true at no, all? No, 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 no. He's he's not. Uh, you know, and if anybody's still sending him money after this, you're a freaking idiot. But no, this man has wholeheartedly backed up Hillary Rotten Clinton. He was on the same stage as. You know what I've noticed about Hillary Clinton? He, he they, she likes to be at in the back right of whoever's speaking, as if she has her hand up the anal passage of whoever's speaking for her. All right? She did that to Obama in North Carolina. You can look at that speech. I mean, I had never seen Obama campaign so enthusiastically and so aggressively, even for himself. This megalomaniac hasn't even campaigned like this for himself. You should take a look at that speech in which Barack Obama literally is the puppet of Hillary Rotten, and look at the face of Hillary Rotten in back of goddamn Obama, smiling as if she's some kind of goddamn master of the universe, all right? Same thing with the Bernie speech today. And you can tell Bernie Sanders was reluctant in trying to uh, speak in favor of Hillary Rotten Clinton. You could see the constipation look on his face, that he did not want to do this, but he's got to do it, because... If he wants to continue to remain a part of the Democratic establishment, because I've always said that this man was a Democratic establishment hack, that he's going to go ahead and play ball. And that's what he's doing, folks. And that's why I'm telling all you feel the burn ass cracks. How does that make you feel knowing that you gave all your effort, time, energy, and money into this man only for you to be forced to vote for the candidate that he made you hate. Huh? Oh, isn't that great? That's what Bernie Sanders, that's what most socialist leftists do, huh? <laughs> they're liars, all of them, every leftist, every liberal. They're sociopathic, unadulterated, piece of garbage liars. So I'm telling you, uh, you Bernie Sanders supporters, uh, feel the burn, huh? Uh, feel the burn, burn victims. Feel the damn burn, baby. <laughs> Woo! Anonymous Radio Graffiti. Rise up! This is a summer of digital chaos, baby. The capitalist army is a terrorist organization, and we need to emphasize this. Uh, shut up! Don't you even kid around about that, you scumbag! 
Don't you even kid around about that, you son of a bitch. Don't you even dare. Don't you dare. Don't you even dare, boy. God damn it. 479 Radio Graffiti. Hey, Joe. I just want to play some piano for you, if that's okay. All right, go ahead. Oh, shut up. I know what that is, you stupid moron. All right? Sounds like two pricks and no puss where I'm standing. All right? How about uh, 410 Radio Graffiti? He pulled her dick out, and yes, it happened. Shit just comes down on my face. Uh, shut up. Shut up, you sick, twisted freaks. I'm telling you, man, you people are not right in the head. You understand? I'm sure you're the same idiot that's, you know, taken up for this Pokemon Go crap, too, huh? Huh? And that's why you're, you're, that's why y'all know about all this sick pornographic material, because no one cares about you people, except your stupid dumbass mothers that probably pussy pampered your ass to get to this man-child phase that you're at in life today. And as far as I'm concerned, your mother should be Ike Turner bitch slapped for making you into the man-child that you are today. Seriously, I'm not kidding around. I think that the spirit of Ike Turner should be resurrected and be slapping your mother in her face for bringing up a man-child piece of trash that can't stand up for themselves, that can't make money for themselves, that can't talk for themselves, that can't find a significant other for themselves, that can't take care of themselves, that can't find a place for themselves. You stupid son of a bitch. How about uh, area code uh, 319, Radio Graffiti? We don't want to hear you type ass crack, all right? How about 904 Radio Graffiti? Ah, damn it. Fucking pro. Ah! I got nothing. Oh, yeah, I know, I know you do. All right, get out of my freaking uh, my call lines, for Christ's sake. Of course you got nothing, all right? Of course you got nothing. You are nothing. Stupid son of a bitch. Anonymous, Radio Graffiti. Hey, Ghost. Um, I was wondering if you're still going to sell the cans, because what I was planning on doing was um, melting one down into like, the shape of a ring that you can put over your penis, because I was going to give it to Tub Guy if that was okay with you. Oh, geez, shut up. All right, just shut your stupid, stinking mouth. Look, I'm, I'm all, I mean, look, I'm going to I'm gonna sell the cans. I'm probably going to start selling them next week sometime. All right, probably next ball or Friday, as far as, I mean, uh, possibly. Maybe a little sooner than that. I'm not sure yet, okay? But I don't like what you trolls are saying you're going to do with the cans. I really think that's fucking disgusting. Excuse my French. I think it's disgusting. I think you people are are, are not right in the head, to say the least, all right? I'm not kidding around. Jesus Christ. Teutonic Plague, what's going on? Radio Graffiti. Hey, happy Taco Tuesday, Ghost. I have a question for you. Hey, what's going on? What is your opinion of one Edward Snowden? Well, I've got mixed mixed uh, feelings about Snowden because uh, I uh, I appreciate him uncovering a lot of these cables in which uh, you know he kind of unearths what exactly is going on as it relates to the surveillance state and how uh, the surveillance state is so interconnected that they can literally. Uh, listen in, uh, follow you on the internet. I mean, really, really precarious stuff. Uh, the things that I don't appreciate is that he broke the rule of law. And you see, without laws, we are nothing. We are absolutely nothing. Now, it remains to be seen, and this is, of course, rumor mill, that Barack Obama is going to pardon uh, Edward Snowden, but I don't think so. I mean, Edward Snowden going full Ruski. I mean, he's over there living in Russia right now, which doesn't look very good considering that uh, NATO and Obama are trying to directly confront Russia with a nuclear confrontation. But I got mixed feelings about, uh, about Snowden. I don't think that he should be tried for treason. Uh, But I definitely do believe that there needs to be some level of repercussion uh, for him breaking the law. Uh, What's your view? I myself, uh, I appreciate what he did. Um, I actually, I know he broke the law, and that's bad, and 
yes, there should be some consequence, but it's technically not treason because, see, the government's job is to keep secrets from its enemies, right? And if it's keeping secrets like this from the people, well, then I guess that makes the people the enemy, doesn't it? Well, you know, you got a very good point there. And moreover there, uh, Teutonic, considering the uh, testimony of James Comey and his lack of uh, uh, suggested prosecution for uh, – or recommendation, I should, should say, prosecution for Hillary Rotten Clinton, and then the testimony or the non-testimony of Loretta Lynch, I guess uh, classified information doesn't mean diddly anymore, right? Uh, I guess not. I mean – we here at the Capitalist Army, we don't intend when we drop the doxes and do digital damage. It, it's all accidental. See, we're all careless and unsophisticated here, Ghost. I mean, if that's the precedent that's going to be set, well, then if my, if, if my ass gets hauled to court, then that is the defense I'll use. They'll say, hey, why did you do this, this, and this? Oh, I, was, I, I did it, yeah, but I didn't mean to do it. I was careless and unsophisticated, you see, and I'll point to Comey's testimony as a precedent. And, so you know, that's what, the, yeah, that's what one of the congressmen was trying to say to Loretta Lynch today. I mean, he was so fed up with her non-answers that he said, look, I mean, let's make it simple. If I'm, going 50, if I'm going 65 in a 55, do I deserve a ticket? And she couldn't even answer that question with a yes or no. She said, well, uh, that depends on the uh, state laws and, uh, you know, the municipality. And everybody started laughing at her. I don't know if you saw that, but everybody started laughing at her in the goddamn uh, the, the, the congressional hall. I mean, it's just unbelievable, and you're absolutely right. I, I'm gonna, I mean, everyone who commits crime, I mean, I mean, I think, in my opinion, all they have to do is just say, oh, well, um, I was uh, careless and unsophisticated, and I had really no criminal intent. I'm just, uh, re- re- I'm just careless, and, uh, and also, uh, you know, I'm unsophisticated. I don't know what I'm doing. I mean, there's a dangerous precedent to be set, so, I mean, maybe you do have a point there with Snowden, considering that this government – doesn't really care about classified information or whether it got into the hands of the enemies via the uh, email server of uh, Hillary Rotten Clinton. Uh, I, I believe that maybe Snowden, you know, should just come back and you know scot free, maybe slap on the hands if he just says that he did it in a in a careless and unsophisticated manner. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, want to give a shout out to anybody there, Teutonic. Uh, long live the capitalist army. Shout out to Steam Chat, Sergeant Yoda, Kahuna Capitalist, Karaskin. Uh, what's going on to the Green Bio? Cody from Unknown, all right? What's going on to those people? I uh, also want to give a shout out to your good self, of course, and the engineer. Give me capitalism or give me death. Happy Taco Tuesday. Hey, happy Taco Tuesday, Teutonic, and uh, thank you for calling up. We were appreciate uh, every time you call up man you're uh you're a good member of the capitalist army we appreciate your commentary over here 712 radio graffiti hey ghost this is tyrell with blm i agree with everything you say oh yeah you agree you're you're with black lives matter yes now uh I i understand the black strife okay if you're legitimately with black lives matter but do you agree that uh, Black Lives Matter is being led down a path of self-destruction by a potential LGBT AIDS uh, HIV operative? Well, I mean, the D-Ray, you know, I'm actually gay myself, so, um, you know. Oh, dude, shut up. Get this idiot out of here. Get out of here, for Christ's sake. You don't even sound black. Jesus Christ, you sound like some freaking white cracker-ass cracker trying to be black. I hate I hate crackers trying to be black. You know that? I mean, I'm serious. Black people, why do you in why do you allow these white idiots to m- make a mockery of your strife and act black? I- I'm serious, man. You should kick the crap out of these people. I don't understand why Eminem hasn't been touched yet, huh? Huh? I mean, look, hey, hey, rappers. All right, rappers of the world, all right, especially if you want to, uh, you know, make a name for yourself. Why don't you go find Eminem and give him a bitch slap, please? All right? I mean, I I remember a a rapper that was an Internet rapper. uh, What the hell was his name? That idiot with the freaking tattoos on the face? Uh, Stitches. That's right. Remember when that that moron, you know, was trying to be some dangerous gangster rap character talking about, uh, you know, all kinds of murder, killing, this and that? 
tries to go confront the rapper of the game at some Miami club, waits for him outside, and then gets bitch slapped, uh, knocked the hell out, and then gets arrested, so on and so forth. So, I mean, this is what needs to be done to Eminem as far as I'm concerned and any other white rapper as far as I'm I mean, seriously, man. I'm not joking. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not talking about, you know, if you're just making some, like, you know, tongue-in-cheek, uh, funny rap or something. I'm talking about these idiots uh, that, uh, you know, are out here thinking that they're true gangsters, for Christ's sake. Like, have you heard this idiot named Slim Jesus? This stupid idiot? I mean, I- I'm waiting for somebody to, you know, uh, put out a freaking world star hip-hop of this guy getting bitch-slapped around, for Christ's sake, claiming to be some goddamn gangster rapper toting guns and shooting people. I'm sick of this crap. I'm sick of posers. I'm sick of posers. Jesus Christ, man. Anyway, who else do we got here? We got uh, Anonymous, Radio Graffiti. Brony Radio. Brony Radio. I'm a brony. It's not a joke. My little pony. No, 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 no. Shut up with that brony crap. God damn you. I'm getting infested by bronies. God damn it, man. And you know, folks, I was actually broadcasted at BronyCon. I mean, I mean, come on. 469 Radio Graffiti. Here we go with the Christmas in July crap. I, mean, I don't understand why you insist on... Why? Why do you insist on doing this? I mean, we haven't even gotten through the other holidays, man. Let's get through Halloween first, for Christ's sake, man. Good God, you stupid... Un- you see, this just underscores the man-child here, you know? The emphasis of Christmas... It just underscores the man-child. It underscores why all these people are playing Pokemon Go and crap. Give me a break. Oh, my God. I'm getting jaded just, you know, just sitting here for Christ's sake, boy. Anyway, who else do we got going on over here? We got area code 210, Radio Graffiti. Hey, Ghost. Happy Taco Tuesday. I actually had a question for you, if you don't mind me asking. Hey, Happy Taco Tuesday. Go right ahead. All right, so uh, my sister's quite opposite of me. She turned out to be a Bernie Sanders supporter as well as a Black Lives Matter supporter as well as a um, Syrian refugee supporter. Um, What do you think I should do in order to try to see about trying to change her mind in regards to those views? Because we actually tried having her watch... um, When Milo was in San Antonio, we tried having him her watch the Milo interview and she immediately shut it down because she said it goes against my views so I don't want to listen to it. She just immediately shut down. What do you have, I guess, as a suggestion to get through to somebody like that? Oh man, I, I you know what? I, I'm the bad person to ask because I mean typically uh I, I don't I particularly don't like being around closed minded people like this. Uh even if they're a part of my family Because I I don't think that it's even worth it. What's unfortunate is that I think that people need to fall on their own. And I think that maybe you should just take a step back and allow her to, you know, get the uh, experience of life, you know, slapping her in her mouth and realizing that all these ridiculous ideas and these views are going to let her down. And that's really what happens to most leftists anyway, because, I mean, there are no true leftists anymore. There's no true leftists anymore, all right? I mean, take a look at everyday uh, leftists in today's America. I mean, they don't know their ass from their elbow. I mean, every time they put a mic in these leftist faces, they don't know what the hell to say. And then when they are caught in a tongue-tying predicament, they just walk away or start agitating. So... To be completely honest with you, I really don't know what to say. I mean, she's obviously in a closed-minded realm. She's, uh, you know, saying, oh, that goes against my beliefs. I don't want to see it. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to – and the reason that she's doing that is because she doesn't want to be warped out of her reality, her perspective. I mean, you know, it goes along the lines with that hipster crap. I mean, you know, these hipsters, why are they hipsters? 
because they're in a warped perspective that they believe that certain materialization of clothing on how they act, how they talk, what they buy, if they have certain levels of coffee, all these little stupid nuances encapsulate this idea of actually achieving something, of doing something, of self-worth. And unfortunately, I've come to the realization that people need to fall on their face, you know. And when people fall on their face, they either do one of the two things, all right. They either become complete degenerate idiots, which probably they deserve to be anyway, or they realize how stupid they actually are, and they completely uh, rectify the idiocy, you know what I'm saying? The idiocy that... uh, The deals are getting hotter during the Deer Days of Summer. Get 0% financing for 60 months on all John Deere compact tractors. Plus, get a best-in-class six-year powertrain warranty at no additional cost. Hurry in today for the hot deals of summer. Offer ends August 2nd, 2016, subject to approved installment credit with John Deere Financial. Terms, conditions, exclusions, and warranty limitations apply. See dealer for details. Visit your local John Deere dealer today to take advantage of special savings going on now. Find out more at myjohndeerdealer.com. That encapsulates uh, their previous mental capacity. So, I mean, that's all I can tell you, man. I'm sorry that uh, I wish there was some other remedy. I wish there was something easier to say. I wish there was something you could show uh, your sister. But uh, I believe that she's just going to have to. Uh, she's going to have to learn on her own. Unfortunately, I mean, is she older than you? No, she's younger. She's actually 20. I'm 24. Um, I actually completely agree when it comes to her falling her ass. I actually tend to do that with people that I've tried to speak with in terms of them changing their mind in regards to anything. But I completely agree. Like, she needs to fall on her ass in regards to this. Like, it's tough, but they have to learn. And remember, she's 20. I mean, people don't know anything when they're 20. I mean, seriously. I mean, just wait till she's 21 and she's able to drink. Uh, you know, uh, politics will be the last thing on her mind. She'll be out there uh, clubbing, drinking, going out, having a good time, and she won't even think about uh, Black Lives Matter, uh, you know, uh, Bernie Sanders or any of that crap. I'm serious. I, I, I you know. <laughs> Women that turn 21, I don't think that any man should go for because women just just go loose and, and they just – I mean, I'm not saying loose, but you know what I'm saying. They go drinking, they go out, they go partying, they experience a little bit of life that they didn't have prior to turning 21. And, uh, you know, it takes a few years before they start recognizing that, oh, Jesus Christ, this is real life. I got to go and I got to work. I got to make money. I got to put a roof over my head. I got to pay bills. I got to do this. I got to do that. So, uh, you know, I, I, I mean, I I hope that your sister, at some point in time when she turns 21, she goes out, uh, becomes, uh, you know, a woman, uh, you know, starts uh, de-emphasizing this ridiculous uh, Black Lives Matter, this ridiculous leftism, and just starts living life a little bit. And then once she starts living life and starts interacting with people, starts understanding different people's perspectives, starts talking to people, I think that it'll reshape in her mind, in my personal opinion, man. I'm sorry that I can't uh, – there's not a re- easier remedy than that. Uh, but uh, that's all I can tell you. Oh, no worries. Thank you so much, for even for your input in general. Um, hey, uh, thank you. I... Thank you for calling. Uh, you want to you wanna give a shout-out to anybody? Of course, shout out to you, shout out to Engineer Teutonic Flag and the Capitalist Army. Hey, thank you very much for calling in. I appreciate uh, the question and uh, good luck to your sister. Uh, just wait till she turns 21. I'm telling you, as soon as women turn 21, they turn into a whole new woman. You know what I'm saying? A whole new woman, for Christ's sake. And I believe that's what's going to happen to your sister. I mean, it happens to them all. And then after a few years, they start realizing that, oh, man, I got to. I got to do something with my life, and that's when they start taking life a little bit serious, in my opinion. Three three seven radio graffiti. Oh uh, yeah, I'd like to elaborate on this whole organ harvesting thing. How can people put faith in these global bureaucracies like the UN and the EU when the UN will not even go and do its job without being petitioned? But they weren't petitioned; they still won't do it. They won't even do their damn job and stop this genocide from happening. They know it's happening. They know that these people are being genocided in China, but they don't care. They don't care to do shit. You got a very good point, man. I mean, look, that's why I'm against international institutionalization. I mean, ever since we started bringing in uh, international institutions as a reality, 
in foreign policy, I mean, everything has gone to hell. I mean, in my personal opinion, uh, we've gotten more conflicts, uh, more people uh, that are in uh, war zones, uh, more people in poverty. I mean, hell, the United Nations folks, uh, the so-called peacekeepers that go into impoverished countries to uh, hand out food, folks, it has been proven for the past 20 years that these UN peacekeepers utilize food for trading sex with underage girls in third world nations. If you don't believe me, Google it up. United Nations, or put UN peacekeepers, food, sex, all right? And take a look at all the articles that are going to come out about the UN peacekeepers, which are supposed to be giving the food to the people. That's why they're there. They're supposed to be, quote, peacekeepers, United Nations peacekeepers, for Christ's sake. And here we go. All right? They exploit underage children in exchange for food. Yeah, that's the United Nations peacekeeping for your ass, and you're absolutely right. They're not going to acknowledge the genocide that's happening in China. They know that the Tibetans are being snagged by the Chinese government and their, har their organs are going to be harvested because they're healthy people. The Tibetans, they don't smoke, they don't drink, they exercise all the time. I mean, they've got great organs if you happen to be in that whole organ harvesting nonsense, all right? Jesus Christ. Let's keep going, shall we, folks? Uh, I'm going to take a couple more callers, then I'm getting the hell out of here, to say the least. How about Anonymous Radio Graffiti? Do I have a party house? Mark Paul. Because in my personal opinion, I personally believe 
that this man has the AIDS. And if the man has the AIDS, it puts his motive in perspective on why he's leading his own people. He's leading his own people into self-destruction. It makes perfect sense at this point in time. And the sooner the Black Lives Matter people uh, understand this, the better. All right? And we got Brosif, Brosif Statin over here from Ireland, for Christ's sake. Stick a four-leaf clover up your ass, all right? I know who you are, you stupid moron. Anyway, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me, for Christ's sake. You understand that? And, oh, yeah, by the way, your own boy sold you out. So, you know, you want to keep going, go ahead. Anyway, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. I will be back here tomorrow, baby, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. And, of course, folks, uh, I'm here every Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. Of course, the official website is blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. That's blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. I have every episode that yours truly has ever conducted on this broadcast there to download absolutely free. All right? So if you ever miss an episode or if you want to – you know, go back into the archives, baby. If you want to go back into the archives, they're all there, all the way back from 2008. And, of course, folks, if you haven't already done so, please follow me on Twitter, folks. We do all kinds of digital damage. And, moreover, folks, we're doing more and more digital damage on Twitter. If, by some chance, Twitter bans my account, I will always be on blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. So that's a very important website to bookmark and of course go ahead and follow me on twitter at politics ghost all one word no underscores baby politics ghost is the name to follow all right anyway folks i am telling you this was one hell of a taco tuesday news day all kinds of things that we were talking about i mean we we, we heard about the loretta lynch non-testimony that was ridiculous that woman should step down or be uh removed from the Attorney General's office, for the DOJ, excuse me, uh, we saw uh, Barack Obama lecturing the Dallas police force right after the uh, Dallas shooting tragedy. Uh, We also saw Bernie Sanders, (laughs) Bernie Sanders supporting Hillary Rotten Clinton, for Christ's sake. I mean, we had a hell of a news day, to say the least. Uh, Tomorrow, once again, I will be back. 4 p.m. Central Standard Time, blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. I am out of here, folks. I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me live or in the archive. Until next time, long live the capitalist army and death to feminism, death to socialism, death to communism, and death, death, death to totalitarianism. You hate communism? You hate communism, Templeton? You hate communism, Templeton? He hates communists. He hates communists. He hates communists. Do you like Black Lives Matter? No, he doesn't like Black Lives Matter. Anyway, folks, thank you for tuning in with me. All right, Politics Ghost is the Twitter. Hey, hey, calm your ass down there, Templeton, all right? Calm your ass down. Thank you. All right, Politics Ghost is the name to follow. I am out of here, folks. Long live the capitalist army. All right, all right, calm down, Templeton. I am out. Fios is not cable. We're wired differently, which means you can get the fastest Internet available with equal upload and download speeds from 50 to 500 megs. So you can upload 200 photos before your favorite song is finished. Click the ad and switch to Fios today to get our best offer ever. You give to all kinds of stuff, from your buddy Jim, who's helping a cause that sounds good, to your cousin's random crowdfunding project. And now, you can give to another cause. You. Because one in three of us isn't saving enough for retirement, Prudential is hosting the 4.01K Race for Retirement on September 17th. It's a fun run that helps you save more for you. Join us on September 17th at the Rose Bowl. Register for free at run401k.com. Prudential Insurance Company of America, Newark, New Jersey. 